As always, want to lead our show with a kind thank you to our sponsors and Iowa Smokehouse. Thank you to Iowa Smokehouse down in Albia. This Iowa company has been with us throughout this magical run for the Iowa women. And they are with us throughout the postseason as we head into the final weekend of March Madness. Use the code Hawkeyes at iowasmokehouse.com to get your order tonight and uh, celebrate an unbelievable victory and yet another final four trip for our Hawkeyes with a $50 order. You get free shipping to your home. And again, 15% off that order with the code Hawkeyes. That's iowasmokehouse.com. Use the code Hawkeyes. And of course, want to thank RTI threads. They are with us throughout the year as well. I know our call line is blowing up as expected. So if you're on the call line, hang tight trying to stay very calm here to start the show. I think everybody just needs a bit of a reprieve before everybody goes bonkers, which I'm sure is going to happen. Anyways, RTI threads, Iowa baseball swarm.com, the baseball team, their season in full swing. Check it out. New website, Iowa baseball swarm.com. You can also check out the Aaron Graves apparel, Zach Lutmer, Cooper DeGene still got a line with RTI. Check it all out at RTI threads.com. All right, before we add someone else in, let me turn my volume down. Okay, I think someone's got something to, to do here. Kashin Alexander is with us. All right, I'm ready, Kashin. I do not agree with you, Corey. No, we are not going to calm down. No, we're not going to quiet down. And have it, it is no beer. That's why we're drinking here. Let's go! Kashin... Kashin celebrates with the Snuggie, as always. And I don't normally do this, but I'm going to put on the cowboy hat. So we are here with a Snuggie and a cowboy hat. 
Let's go. We'll go ready for this post game show. I, I really, honestly, Kashin, I don't even think it's a matter. It's it's not a matter of I'm not excited. I just don't really know what to say. I mean, maybe you should be the host and I should be the guest host. I don't. Where do you, where do you start with this? Oh my god. Okay. First of all, Kane and Clark was phenomenal. I don't care. I I mean, first of all, she shot 23s, which is crazy, but she named nine of them. So that's close to 50%. Whatever. Okay. She was the difference maker down there. When she came in the game, they could not move her around. Addison was like a wall. Like she was not moving. I was so happy with that. I was even asking her to be put back in. Didn't think I'd ever say that, but I was. And she stood the test of time. With her minutes. I was so pleased with her. Sid the kid. I mean, we got to start calling her like. I don't know. Sid something. Because she's just so reliable, man. Like, she's just so reliable. I don't know how else to say that. She's always in the right places. She's. I'm never screaming at the TV saying Sid in a negative way. Like, ever. So, to me, that's just amazing. I got to give Gabby points. I know I looked at the scoreboard and or the stat sheet and i saw that flage johnson ended up with like 20 i don't know whatever she ended up with that was a real quiet like 20 she i felt like she did not affect the game like she has been doing so i gotta give gabby props okay i gotta give her props with that because she was she was in there um why the hell did they have Haley man list on caitlin clark what did they think was gonna happen I will say this, and I thought the commentators, they were pretty good reacting to that. I don't think Haley necessarily did a bad job. Like, it didn't feel like she did a bad job, but you do wonder about that. What I mean, going into the game, uh, you and I talked about this, and you talked about Flauger. Obviously, Poa, you hit the nail on the head. Once Poa, she was in the game, she was on Clark. But I, I was surprised with Haley Van Lith, and I, I just wonder if that's trying to protect Flauger Johnson from foul trouble. I don't know, but she got cooked. That's all I know. And you know what's funny is if anybody remembers the first possession that Poa came in the game and she looked like she was on roller skates, I said, oh, hell. <laughs> it, she looked scared to guard Clark. It was like what, you was never on skates with nobody else. Clark handles ain't, you know, masterful. Like, she got a little handle, but it ain't, like, masterful for you to be damn near falling over twice in one possession. I was very shocked by that. Number two, Flage, although she may not be as quick laterally, she has more height than the other two. So I thought, okay, even if you start with Haley Van Lith, even if you start with Poa, whatever, at some point you got to make a change, no? Because that ain't cutting it. <laughs> well, That's not cutting it. Am I, am I right in saying, though, part of the problem is you – they did get in semi-foul trouble. Poa had three. Um, Michaela Williams ended with three. Van Lith had three. Flauger had four. Obviously, Reese fall, fouled out. So that was best-case scenario for Iowa. But, I mean, like, don't you think that's a, a move by Mulkey with a view to keeping her best you, players on the floor? Maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe she felt like, you know what – you know, Caitlin, if we knock every, if we, you know, shut everybody, we just gonna let Caitlin go off kind of thing. But that doesn't work <laughs> because you either have to be disciplined and let Caitlin, when she gets in the lane, just let her shoot it, or you have to help. And they kept helping, so that doesn't work with the game plan. Because if we're gonna shut down everybody else, we just gonna let Caitlin go to work. She's gonna have sixty. Like it is what it is. But it didn't seem like that. And Lisa Bluter out coached. Kim Mulkey today because we started in zone. We ain't like how that looked. And we switched to man, brought Addison O'Grady in, and that kind of turned everything up for us a little bit. And then, um, I again, I'm not complaining, right? But why exactly was LSU settling for three-pointers and outside shots? Why, you might ask, because they were doing the same exact thing. <laughs> That they've been doing all year. Instead of going to what works and what is your advantage and playing team basketball, everybody want to be the hero. Everybody want to take these kind of tough shots. No, they should have been feeding it in the post all day. Anissa Morrow and Angel Reese should have had 50 combined. <laughs> but they weren't. It was like, what are y'all doing? 
But you know what? I was not complaining. Good for us. Went back and forth. I just don't know. Uh, between Kylie Fearbach and, and Sydney a falter for our player of the game, don't you think, uh, Kasheen? You said what? I'm just, just kidding. Oh. I'm just joking. Oh, was I was April Fool's. <laughs> up with your Snuggie, yes. <laughs> April Fool's. Okay. Okay. I should have actually made a banner for that, but I, I don't know. I you think should have. Collapse had I done that. You should have. Uh, RGI Threads player of the game, Caitlin Clark, 41 points, 12 assists, 7 rebounds. And you mentioned the 23-point attempts. Whenever I'm making up the, the scrolling banner at the bottom pre-show, I'm always like, okay, do I include field goal percentage? Do I include three point field goals? And I went back and forth. I'm like, wait a minute. She made nine threes. How could I not include that? But like, we're so accustomed to her making. I mean, I remember when we Iowa basketball, men's basketball fans celebrated Jordan Bohannon making eight threes at Maryland in the regular season. Caitlin makes nine on nearly 50% shooting. It's crazy. It is crazy. And a lot of the, I mean, the level of difficulty on so many of those threes, I know we've talked about it so many times, but I mean, the, the ESPN broadcast showed it. You're talking 27, 28, 29 feet from the hoop. Uh, coming off screens, obviously that her, her patented step back to the left. Um, I just, she made so many big shots in this game. And there was one moment, I believe it was in the third quarter when Iowa, this game was really won in the third. If you go back and yeah, look at the the yeah. numbers this was one in the third there were a couple moments where i literally said i verbalized it i said don't shoot and they both went in and at that point i just sh shut up i'm just like well i obviously don't know what's a good shot anymore it's one of those days that's what i call it it's <laughs> one of those days uh, maybe on another day it's a bad shot but not tonight <laughs> it it's one of those days and she's one of those players but there are i mean i i, I don't even know if that's fair to say one of those players because we've never seen anybody like her Steph we've never that's, that's the only that's the only literally that's the only person i could think of that's in the realm of what we're seeing like you even steve kerr has talked about it all the time when he says like he had to adapt to steph curry and as, as far as what's a good and bad shot because 90 percent of them shots are terrible like you know in regards to you know high percentage and everything that we know to be basketball but they don't change the whole the whole game as far as I'm concerned. I I I, I don't know. That was that was insane. I felt bad for Haley Van Lith. I really did. <laughs> I really did. We've she never seen anybody do this at the collegiate level. Steph Curry was good at Davidson. No, no, not at all. You know, not at all. High enough, a uh, good enough school to be able to have this type of exposure. But I mean, no yeah, one's no. done it at this level of basketball. Um, and it is incredible, and we are kind of a broken record in saying that. But this is one of her best performances of her career, and this is her fourth year. Yes, and Angela. the most—I mean, the most number of games she has left is two, and she seems to be playing her best basketball right now. And and what a week ago, Kashin, people—we had somebody ask us on here, why is Clark struggling to shoot? Well, she didn't struggle to shoot tonight. She hasn't struggled to shoot once she got to Albany. Well, she didn't shoot great against Colorado, but boy, she no. she uh, found every every she which commanded pass the floor. Had. She commanded the floor one hundred percent. And let me say this: I'm I'm pulling up the official box score as we're going to open this up. I know we got a ton of people that want to talk. Here's the deal, folks: we've got to keep calls relatively short. I am going to cut people off tonight because this is a wild, wild evening. We've got people blowing up the phone line. And in order to not be here for five hours, we have to be able to keep things relatively. Hey, number we at? How many people on here? Well, the phone, the the stream yard, we've got one, two, three, four, five people. No, how many StreamYard. people is watching? Oh, how many people are watching? We are at nine ninety two. I need at least seven hundred likes. Okay. Right now. So that we, you know what, we didn't do that at the beginning of the last show. We did it at the end. So why don't we I do don't it? Care, right I'm doing now. it both. Well, you, you're, you're absolutely right in doing that. So we've got about a thousand people watching, and I'm going to look at our like numbers. And if it's not at least, let's see, we're at 97 likes. Come on, y'all want to hear me sing again? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I know y'all right. do. Hold down, hit the like button, hit the thumbs up button. We're going to open this call line. All right, we just got 100 likes, just like that. Because the power. <laughs> The power of Kashin's marketing skills right there. 
Yes. So, uh, please hit that like button. Be sure to share on social media. I can only do so much. I'm kind of a one person crew on the social media side of things. So please help out on that note and uh, be sure to share the link out, the, the uh, stream out to social media. We're going to keep callers relatively short. One or two questions at the max. If I cut you off, it's nothing personal. Let's go to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. And we start with one of our regulars and our fan favorites, Bert. I'm sorry, Ryan. Ryan, you're with us, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Wow, how how is I I need I need my uh, blood pressure medicine. I think. Well, oh yeah, uh, I'm sweating under this nuggy here, so I'm with you. <laughs> I don't blame you, Kitchen. Um, second second favorite win in Iowa history. I still gotta give the nod to South Carolina last year, but today was about redemption. Caitlin pouring shut up juice. Um, you know. She's not the greatest of her, all this kind of garbage. Well, we we don't get to back-to-back Final Fours without her. That goes without saying. The field. Let's talk about the field that we had to get through to get to this point. <laughs> it was a stacked field. Uh, given that we were the number two seed overall in the tournament, it was probably an unfair uh, field. However... We, we took on the best you could possibly throw at us to get to this point, and we persevered, and we won, and these t- girls are tough as hell. Last thing I just wanted to say, because I know Corey, Cowboy Corey over here needs to move on, we got out-rebounded 54-36, to 36, mm-hmm. and yet we find ways. And you know what? If I'm Kim... Uh, Don Staley, I'm getting a little worried because this team finds ways to win. And they did it last year, getting out, rebounded, whipped on the boards, but we find a way. Why? Because we have the greatest player of all time and nobody else does. Well, wise words, Ryan. Appreciate you as always, sir. Appreciate your support of Iowa Smokehouse, our sponsors, and and this show. So uh, keep on keeping on, sir. Hey, God bless you guys. Let's go party. The bar is open. (laughs) okay hey we we, we're at 1040 people on the live stream but we can go higher and lemansky putting his number in for a purchase of a pink snuggie for (laughs) kashin or a second hawkeye shirt so he's leaving that up to kashin so kashin after the show but uh, appreciate the super chat lemansky i appreciate it the Kashin Alexander wardrobe. Hey guys, do me a favor because I know LSU's press conference. If there's anything important, throw it in the chat since we ain't just curious. <laughs> that's all. Do you anticipate anything from Kim Mulkey that's of note? Just, I mean, given, I know it's hard to predict with her, but like, I didn't think right. the officiating, I thought the officiating was pretty they play. I thought it was back and forth the whole game, and there were some calls that went against each team. I know she's yeah. probably not happy with the Angel Reese foul there at the end. She did lower her shoulder. I don't know that that uh, Kate Martin was set. She was not. But she did lower her shoulder, and yep. there were missed calls earlier in the game. It was not egregious. It's a hard one to officiate, but do you anticipate fireworks in the press conference room from Kim? I don't think I'll um, anticipate fireworks. I'll be curious to see if anybody asks her some real life questions in regards to why the hell she put Haley Van List on Caitlin Clark, why they didn't go inside, like, you know, real questions. Like, not like the fluff in the media kind of stuff. I want real answers. What was y'all doing? (laughs) Those are the kind of things I would like to hear. Does she Um, answer real questions? Because every time I hear somebody ask her a real question, she just gets angry and said she's not answering it. That's what I always hear Kim Mulkey do. So I'm just curious if she actually Well, maybe it's basketball related, you know, as far as the game's concerned. So I would think she would have an option or something. Like, what was the game plan here? What were you, like, why were you guys not going inside? That's insane to me. But again, it ain't my problem. It's our year, baby. We'll move along to our next Iowa Smokehouse caller. Let's go to Corey. Hey. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> You're here. The lights lightsaber and all. How you doing, Corey? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing good. I, I I honestly wasn't expecting a win tonight. So a win feels really, really, really good. And let me just start off by saying a falter, dog. Gabby, 
Dog. Oh, Grady? Dog? <laughs> I mean, listen. You got to, nah, you got to say it with you. Say it with your chest. You better say it with your chest. Addison, she she deserves to be say it with your chest. Come on. Because she oh, was. Here's my big boy. Wow, he's he, this is getting big. He is 60 pounds now. Okay. <laughs> and that's a lot Man. of, and that's a lot of dog. <laughs> I just I love the effort tonight. I everybody brought their lunch pails. Caitlin was Caitlin. Um, I think she uh, distributed around the floor, and uh, there was a I made what two bad shots. I mean, to be, I think she took fairly good shots tonight, and uh, I was just overly impressed with the uh, overly impressed with the effort out of everybody in the night. Absolutely. And I, I honestly, I sat there in the second half, Kashin, looking at that Morrow versus Martin matchup. And I thought Martin got worked a couple of times. But then I look at Martin's stat line. I mean, she ended up with, what, 21 points. Um, she were, you know, eight of 16 from the field, four or four from the free throw line, six boards. Everybody had to contribute on the glass, even though they got beat badly as far as the numbers you knew they were going to get beat badly it's exactly I mean, we knew that though yeah you <laughs> knew that was going to happen it's what happened against south carolina a year ago iowa has proven you can win if you're good enough at all these other areas without winning on the glass and yeah. i mean how, how do you how do, how has iowa done that twice with a couple of goliath goliathly big teams cash you know um I think there's a couple of things. One, I think teams get caught up in the Caitlin glory because it's honestly the only thing I can think about. I don't think it is that hard. I think everybody in America knew LSU strength and where they were going to beat us. But somehow they only use half of it, which doesn't make sense. So the only thing I can think of is people get so caught up in the flashiness of Caitlin and the crazy shots that they almost forget what they're supposed to be doing because it just doesn't logically make sense. Like we've said, they could have easily just pounded inside all day, every yep. single possession. Like, <laughs> And we would have had to make some kind of adjustment, but they never made us make an adjustment in regards to the post players. After we made our initial zone to, to man, they never forced us to do anything else. Um. Yep. All, that's all I can think of, honestly, because I don't know. Well, and the crazy part is LSU still got their rebounds. Yes, and they, they still got the they still got their rebounds. They did. They still got the rebounds, but it was limiting those second chance points. But and let's be so, let's clear on something as well. Um, like that first quarter, Iowa was knocking down three after three after three, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, first quarter is important on so many levels but you have in that first quarter you have gabby marshall making a tough three early a three that we don't normally see her attempt from deep and she was not 100 percent open she nails that three which was a good sign she ended up not on scoring the on the move absolutely not a shot we see her take very often we saw kate martin hit a three sydney falter hit a three so yeah. that really helped them and jump started them and you just feel like kasheen in some way that first quarter kind of opened things up for Caitlin, because yeah. she made nine threes. Well, when everybody else is making shots, as we've alluded to and talked about in the past, boy, that just makes it so much more complicated to try to stop this team because they run so well, and they have people that once that defense collapses, you're you're able to kick out and 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 hit jump shots. You have right now you have a blossoming player in Sydney Falter who's scoring at every level. Who would have thought that a year ago at this time? And then is it, honestly, here's the biggest thing that I know we've we've talked about it, but I want to I want to mention it again because it 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 bears repeating. I've been critical of Addison O'Grady for her play this year because she's got limitations. Her length and size absolutely disrupted and bothered Angel Reese. Okay. Angel Reese was taking advantage of Iowa's post. They were taking advantage. She was taking advantage of. Uh, Hannah Stolke. Some of that's not Stolke's fault. She has an mm -hmm. advantage in strength. She's got an advantage in size on Stolke. Stolke runs the floor better than her, mm -hmm. but in the half court, especially on the glass, she was dominating Hannah, getting excellent position, 
getting second opportunity. She had like six rebounds early. They go with Addison, and Addison uh, just, again, her length, staying vertical. I thought she boxed out pretty well for a while. I thought Angel Angel started to get some there again late. I know Angel rolled her ankle at one point in the game, but again, Addison O'Grady's length, she's not going to be able to run the floor as well as Grease, but when they're in the half court, she can compete. For O'Grady, I mean, I saw her pushing uh, Angel off the out of the paint he was. times, and I was just like, I was watching, and I'm just like, who is O'Grady right now? Honestly, I was just again, praying that the refs didn't call those kind of fouls <laughs> because it, depending on who you got, O'Grady yeah. was. I mean, she was giving it to her back there, yeah. and I was just happy that the refs I, were letting them play sh- physically down there on both ends. I say um, shout out, shout out to the refs for a overly well balanced game, overall. Yeah. Overall, agree. And uh, I'll, I'll say one more thing on on Addison. You know, when I she comes into the game, uh, she is the e- exact opposite of Hannah Stolke, right? Like they they are they actually play different positions. Honestly, I would have liked to have seen Hannah and Addison on the floor at the same time. We didn't really see that, but. Again, what we just talked about, Hannah's ability to run, maybe Addison's deficiencies in the full court, but then you flip that. The size and strength of Addison really helped them tonight. And uh, A.J. Ediger came in, played a few minutes, but it was the Addison O'Grady show on the glass. And again, uh, let me pull up first quarter numbers for um, Angel Reese. She had five rebounds in the first quarter, um, and she ended up with 20. But it just felt like things really slowed down once Addison O'Grady was in the game. Um, and Addison, let me see her final numbers. Um, Addison had four rebounds, but that really doesn't tell the whole story because just her ability to box out and uh, help others get rebounds, help others get on the glass, um, so big. And Lisa Bluter talked about it at one point in the game. It's hard to box out when they're two feet from the rim. And uh, you saw Addison using her strength to create space and and uh, help her team get on the glass as much as they could. Uh, Corey, appreciate the phone call. Any last words? Nope. Uh, go Hawks. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the call. All right. Thank you again, Lemansky, for that super chat. D. Rolison says, love the hat, Corey. Jump on the bandwagon. Let's go Hawks. Am I not on the bandwagon? <laughs> I thought I was on that bandwagon. Maybe you're uh, talking about yourself. I'm wearing a cowboy hat, so I guess that that's the type of wagon he's talking about. And D. Rollison, thank you for this one as well. Hey, not cool. Keep it classy, everyone. See you Friday. Let's go, Hawks. And again, remember, folks, we cannot control morons and idiots. No. Let's go to our next Iowa Smokehouse caller. We've got Brian. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, Corey. Hey, Christine. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. How are you? Well, I'm still uh, stoked. You and um, the fan base. Yeah, um, I think I will play their game uh, in in their favor because because LSU was just thought they had every chance to do what they wanted to do and it didn't work. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. Well, early on. Uh- you know, Iowa got off to that quick start, but LSU did start exerting their will on the glass and ended up taking an eight-point lead, Brian. So, uh, you know, I don't know what happened at that point. I was nervous. When you get down by eight and you see them give up, Iowa gave up, boy, in that first quarter, uh, Iowa gave up 31 points to LSU. That's a lot of points for one quarter. So, yeah, you may you may have something there, Brian. And then um, Gabby – I I don't know if this is a lost cause or anything, but I believe she's the girl that does all the little things on the team um, that makes an impact, that, but doesn't make like the biggest impact, but makes an impact that helps the team that, that gets the stats, if, if I'm correct. I mean, I think she's got two different types of Gabbies, right? You've got the Gabby who really just locks in and tries to focus on defense and tries to do the little things, make the small plays, those kind of things like we did today. On the offensive end, we didn't hear much from Gabby, aside from that three that was different for us. And uh, I think she drove into the paint once. But you have two different types of Gabbies. And today she felt like we needed the defensive little 
do everything person. Um, I don't I don't have really any complaints for about her today, like at all. Honestly, I didn't think she she didn't even get off that many shots. They were on her like glue, which is fine because um, it allowed everything else to be open. But I think Gabby played with what she had today. Hundred percent, Brian. Brian hey, the call. Oh, any, any final words, Brian? Oh, I was just gonna say, hey, Kashin, have you ever seen a a team with this type of sisterhood that's stronger than than any team that's probably in the NCAA uh, uh, as a team right now? Good question. Probably not, only because those three girls, Kate, Gabby, and Caitlin, who are the leaders of the team, have played together so long like they just the amount of games they played together the amount of practices they've done together shooting in the gym by themselves over the summer all of these things create that relation cr create that camaraderie even what Sydney and Falter said in I don't in the press about why she never transferred because of simply her love for the team the university and the coaching staff that speaks volumes Brian, appreciate the phone call, sir. Great stuff, and and thank you for supporting the show. We do appreciate hey, it. Hey, and uh, thank you for having me on again, guys. Thank you, sir. Rough Rider returns. Corey got me interested in women's basketball a couple of seasons back. Thank you, Mr. Brada. Don't thank me because Good job, Corey. We, we, <laughs> no, no, don't thank me because I'm certainly not the reason for that. But thank you for being here. A Rough Rider returns, and Brian, appreciate the super chat. Just wow, pure madness. And that's what this madness. time of year is for. Although it's April now, Kashin, it's no longer March. <laughs> so keeping it rolling through April, that's what we want. And Kyle, Kyle Hawk says, I'm donating for Cash's Snuggy. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, I, it sounds like you're getting a, a pink Snuggy, Cash. So <laughs> that's what it hey, sounds like. Hey, my. Pulling in to the uh, final four. There you go. All right, let's go back to our uh, Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Before we do that, let's run through our stats for today. Uh, you saw those ticking on the bottom line, but let's kind of run through those for everybody. 41 for Caitlin Clark, as we've uh, alluded to, 12 assists, seven rebounds, five turnovers. And I think it's noteworthy, uh, Cash, to bring up the point that Caitlin Clark had a couple early turnovers, in fact, in the first half. Mm -hmm. Let me pull up her numbers in the first half as a whole. Caitlin had um, three turnovers in the first half. It felt like she had more. She had some unorthodox, poor decisions, I thought, early, trying to feed the ball to Hannah Stolke in some awkward positions, and you know she's going to look for tight windows. But, boy, as the game went on, she seemed to clean things up, and obviously you start making shots, yeah. it's going to be a lot easier. She made some phenomenal passes down the court to one to a, that I can remember to a running – uh, Sydney Falter. I think she had one to a running Addison O'Grady. So say what you want about Addison, but she still plays an Iowa system, and that's a that's a lot of fast paced full court action. Um, and then Kate Martin with her twenty one and six. Sydney Falter with sixteen points, five rebounds, and yes, uh, Gabby Marshall only three points, but she drew heavy attention from that LSU defense out on the arc. She drew uh, as always. She drew a heavy defensive assignment. We saw her get a good a big steal late in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Kylie Fierbach played about four minutes of action. AJ Ediger played a little bit. We did not see Taylor McCabe in this game, which surprised me a little bit. I'm never real shocked by that, Kashim, but you did bring up Taylor in uh, our preview segment that you thought she might be able to help them at some well, point. Well, what was my main factor? What did I say? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. I said <laughs> the only issue with her playing is that she is soft. <laughs> And that playing, trying to get in there to rebound is not in her best interest. So I think that was part of it. They just decided they would go with the tougher of everything. Because even Kylie didn't get a ton of minutes. Like she was just in there to just get a breather and she was right back out. Um, meaning just because they needed strength, size, everything to match LSU's toughness. So they basically ran. Think about that. Gabby Marshall played 40 minutes. Caitlin Clark yeah. played 40 minutes. They basically ran five players. Addison O'Grady with 15 minutes, but without Molly Davis. And then you play all, you don't really play the other reserves. 
Mm-hmm. Man, that, those are a lot of minutes. Um, there's going to be some excited uh, Hawkeye players as they make the trek back to Iowa City. However, this is a, a huge time to get some rest in anticipation of, of Friday. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, there's your, your box score update. Again, just a, a really phenomenal effort from Iowa's leaders and uh, specifically Clark and Kate Martin really led this team on the offensive end. Let's go to our next yeah. Iowa Smokehouse caller. Again, we're going to try to keep things short, folks, so it's nothing personal. Let's go to James, who's on our Iowa Smokehouse line. James, uh, Cash, I got the press conference on now, and they did ask her about guarding Kaylin Clark, and her question, her thing was, it's hard to guard Kaylin Clark. Nobody can guard Kaylin Clark. We tried to guard her last year. Luckily, we, we still beat them. I mean, <laughs> and then she, that's what, what? She had 40 last year, didn't she? What? She had 40 last year, didn't she? Yeah, just what she said. She's like, no, we couldn't guard her last year. We luckily we won this year. We couldn't guard her either, or something like that. She was like, we couldn't guard her. So, Kaylin got their number. Clearly. Yeah, but no, that's mainly what she said when they asked her what was with the matchup. She was like, nobody can guard her. But well, I'd be more specific. I, I, if I was the reporter, I would be. I would be asking a follow up question. So, did you feel like Haley Van Lip Le- Le- had the best, <laughs> the best opportunity to? Provides yes. some resistance there. True. Exactly. Well, that, I mean, the first play, I think it was like the first play or like in the first court, I saw her drive by Van Lith one time and I was like, Van Lith cannot guard her. Like, I literally text my friends, I'm like, she cannot guard her. Like, she literally cannot Sorry. sit in front of her. First, first possession. I was like, yeah, yeah. is that Haley Van Lith I see? Like, <laughs> no way. I was in disbelief, honestly, but I was sure. actually very happy at the same time because I am an Iowa fan after all. So. Yeah. But no, it was a good game and I'm happy to see. The win, obviously, it was a tough fight, but we put away in the second quarter, and Caitlin just did Caitlin things. And obviously, it's gonna be tough no matter who you play. You know, even from here on out, even in the lead, it was tough. Right, LSU is a tough team. Everybody you play in March Madness is a tough team, right? Whether you get UConn or USC, so it's gonna be fun to watch. I'm just happy we won. And there was a couple of things that kind of made me mad near the end. A couple of those fouls were not necessary, were not needed. I know we won, but you still, as a coach, I always look at the little detailed things. Sometimes it's like some of those fouls weren't needed, like. You need to foul someone and shoot the foul, on, the foul on Gabby Marshall was really dumb. The foul yeah. on Caitlin Clark was dumber, but yeah, yeah, thanks. But no, it's it's a good win, and I'm just happy that you having all the success you're having tonight, Corey. And I was the first like like four hours ago, so you know I always be here to support hey. no matter what. And uh, it's just fun to see. And I'm sorry that Cash had to deal with what she had to deal with earlier. There's nothing ever that you know. That's not what true Iowa fans are about. I just want you to know that, Cash. So. Well, oh, I'm fully aware of what I Iowa remember, Hawkeyes James, are Just about. always remember, James, you can't fix stupid. I know, I know. I just want to say I'm sorry just because I feel bad for stuff like that. I appreciate happens, it. I know that, like, nothing we can control in that situation, but. I but, appreciate, uh, you. appreciate you being here, sir, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have some, I don't know about cash, but I'm going to be live streaming this week to count down the days to the final four, so that'll be fun. Yeah, sounds good. Enjoy your night. Go Hawks. Thank you, sir. Go Hawks. So many people in the chat. And I see a lot of uh, new names, or at least names that I don't see regularly. And uh, obviously, we've got literally thousands of comments coming in. So I cannot get to all the comments. If I don't get your comment up on the screen, please don't take it personally. But I really appreciate Michael here. Game ball to Addison O'Grady. I absolutely agree with that. Does not mean she's a player of the game, but her right. effort, they don't win without Addison O'Grady. No. I really, I mean, I believe that with all my heart, they don't win with her. And I don't know if they had had to go to Sharon Goodman because she would have been the next up. Well, I guess editor, but, but Sharon's the only one who can get close to what Addison gives you as it relates to size and length. I don't know. Um, I'm really impressed with the confidence level from Addison. It seems like her confidence level has grown and maybe this can be this postseason can be a launching pad for her next year, yeah. her senior year. Cause they're going to need her to step up to the plate next year, especially with Caitlin Clark gone. I mean, the offensive um, sense of urgency is going to be real in the off season to figure out where the points are going to come from without Caitlin Clark. And uh, they need more production down low. I think they need to get Hannah Stolke back into her natural position. And uh, maybe they can do that by bringing more size into that front court with a, a dual threat of Stolke and O'Grady. Maybe we have somebody in the portal. But uh, anyways, I digress. Let's go to... Our call in line. Thank you for calling Iowa Post Game with Kashin Alexander. Who's on our line? Hi, this is Annie from Brooklyn, New York. Hey, Annie. Brooklyn. I am. 
Oh, man, Brooklyn is in the house. I am so happy they won. First of all, <laughs> first of all, when I saw the matchup, the first thing that went through my head was karma. I said they have to get them back. And they did it in such a classy way, with a classy win, and they just really stepped up. I mean, just you know, I agree with what you said about Gabby. She's all over the court, and she does a lot of things that people just don't see, and she does make a difference. So mm. she's quick. She's out there. Another thing I was a little surprised at was they didn't – LSU didn't press the way other teams did, like, near the end. Especially they when – like, Yeah, I just – and you know, <laughs> Iowa still, even when they pressed, they were getting the ball down the court. So they were, they were so able to break that. You know, I was a little surprised they didn't do, like, a full-court press. They weren't, like, all over the court like other teams do, especially in the last five minutes of the game. That was surprised me. What did you think of that? I don't know. Well, they pressed with um, they pressed with under a minute to go, and it looked like Iowa Iowa had some problems uh, with under a minute to go yeah. in that press. In fact, I agree with what Annie said, and maybe Kashin, you just attribute it to fatigue. But I'm looking at that last minute, thinking, why didn't they press earlier with their I length? I thought the same thing, Corey, because the other teams were just all over them, you know, in the end. And and, and you know the oh, other thing about that, Annie, that, that we're not talking about. You talk about the press and the length of LSU, what, what they can cause in the full court. The other thing that the, the, the press does is it slows Iowa, potentially can slow Iowa down when Iowa wants to go, 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 go. And granted, LSU wants to do the same, but Iowa does not have their second best ball handler. Molly Davis is out. So that's oh, another know. reason. To I press. know, I know, yeah. but it is, it is fantastic how they all did step up though. They all stepped up from the get go, from the beginning of the game, they came out, they look like they, they, they were really poised. You know, I just felt that they had, I felt that confidence in them. I, I just, it was karma. I'm telling you, it had to be. I just love the way they came out. They were poised. They stayed calm. They played their game and everybody stepped up. And I just thought it was a great team effort. And I'm go Hawks. Let's do this. Annie, we appreciate, you know? appreciate the phone call. Oh, and, uh, always a pleasure guys. It, I know you got to keep it short. Listen, enjoy, we're going to do this. Go Hawks. I feel the karma. Enjoy the ride, Annie. Thank you for the call. Game. Appreciate yeah. Annie being here from all the way from Brooklyn. Her and her husband supporting the show as always. Um, appreciate the super chat from Chris Cash, the goat mm -hmm. Iowa post game host, the goaded game host, a great Hawkeye. So, uh, Chris, thank you for that. Absolutely agree. It's been so much more enjoyable to have Kashin as a part of this show throughout this this uh, not just postseason but the latter part of the season. So, Kashin, as, as always, thank you for being here. And uh, even though it's it's later on the on the East Coast, I'm sure if you weren't with the show right now, you'd probably be watching USC UConn. So yep. thank you for that sacrifice. I'm sure you'll watch that game back at some point this week. I know I will be, uh, mm -hmm. especially in anticipation of Iowa's Final Four contest. So let's give everybody an update on that game because Iowa, of course, advancing to the Final Four. They'll play the winner of UConn USC. That game is tied at halftime right now, 33-33. So one heck of a battle we've got there and the other elite game, elite eight game out in Albany. Uh, Beckers has 15. Juju's got 13. So those players showing out from their respective powers. Thank you, Chris, for the super chat. T Hawkeye. LSU just 14 points off offensive rebounds. So cash. Yeah, let's see three of them. You are a really good rebounder in your own right as a guard. And by the way, somebody the other day, I want to address this because somebody the other day made a joke about how I have something against um, short guards. And my simple response to that was, well, we have Kashin Alexander on the show every week. <laughs> Aren't you like 5'9", Kashin, with shoes on? That might be a stretch for sure. We'll roll with that. <laughs> All right, 5'8", with shoes on. So anyways... <laughs> Uh, but, but tell us about how, I mean, you give up, you go 52, I mean, see how many offensive rebounds as a whole, um, 23 offensive rebounds to yeah, six 23. and yet only 14 second chance points. How's, how's that possible? I told y'all <laughs> that they miss a lot of bunnies, like a lot. And a lot of the times, they're it's taking them three and four offensive rebounds just to get a bucket. And even if you give up one, don't get discouraged. I don't think we did because we got the second one. Or maybe we got the third one, you know. <laughs> or God forbid, we got the fourth one. You know, like we 
we just kept battling. And I think that's the key. That was the key to all of it. It's because they're going to get rebounds. That's what they do. That's what they're good at. But it was just the the coming back. Okay, they missed a the bunny. They got an old board. They missed another one. We got the rebound. And I think it was more so than that because, like I said, they're going to miss a lot, which they did. And I absolutely agree. They, uh, you know, you knew they were going to struggle. There's just some things you you just go in knowing they they didn't have the advantage in the athleticism category. They didn't have the advantage in the size or strength category. Mm-hmm. However, you can, I mean, I know this seems Discipline. cliche, but you 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 cannot really gauge heart, right? And when you keep going, no. uh, you know, play after play after play, and you keep fighting. Okay, we didn't get the second, get the third, get the fourth. That's heart, right? And stick to itiveness and whatever the numbers say, those numbers are are equally impressive. Um, and that is what LSU excels at. Mr. Year of the Boomerang, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you being here, Mr. Year of the Boomerang. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, let's go before we go to our next caller. Before we go to our next caller, um, again, our RTI threads player of the game, Caitlin Clark, 41 big ones. 12 assists, seven rebounds, and two turnovers. She was phenomenal. And once again, um, she will have an opportunity in this next game to maybe send this team to another uh, national championship game and another matchup with South Carolina. And that would be just as sweet, obviously. Now, South Carolina hasn't won either. They've got NC State coming up this next weekend. Um, And obviously, UConn, USC, whoever that is, whoever comes out of that regional um, will be difficult because uh, again, Uh star power, you talk about star power in this one with Caitlin Clark and, and um, Angel Reese, just as, is a high end. If you get UConn or USC in the final four, let's go to our next Iowa smokehouse caller, Mm -hmm. Corey. Welcome to the show. All right. Kashim. I love you. Okay. First off the greatest smile in the room, the most beautiful, soul in the room well thank you spot on (laughs) correct she called it she said they're gonna miss bunnies get in there and box out and that's what we did they they missed those bunnies yeah they made a lot of them but they missed some of those putbacks and we (laughs) we 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 boxed out enough to get the second or the third rebound made a huge difference secondly my rti threads player of the game is addison o'grady i think she totally shifted the whole flow of that game it was an automatic two points for angel reese over hannah stolke and it would have gone that way all night long I like agree. lionel richie said and Not until Addison O'Grady, our Colorado girl, who Caitlin Clark is very hard on her. I know that she doesn't move as quick as Caitlin would like. A lot of times, Caitlin's like, come on, get her to (laughs) set the pick. No, she's really hard on that girl. Yeah. Caitlin, Caitlin, if you're listening, which you should not be. <laughs> but if you are, you better pat that your girl Addison on the back because yep. her defense changed the entire flow of this game. It made a huge impact yep. on the approach that LSU, the way they played this game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Kashin, you... I follow you on Twitter now, and I, I, you were beating me to the punch. Everything you were saying was about five seconds before I could say it. And I'm like, I was just typing faster. That's all. I was just typing faster. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, it's, um, it's, it's just, it's really inspiring to see this team because I'll tell you when the lump, the lump got in my throat was when. Um, Iowa went up and then LSU made their run in the first half and they oh. go up five and you saw Angel Reese. They, they panned over to Angel Reese and she's like, okay, 
now we got this back. Yeah. We're back in control. And I just felt like she's going to step on our necks right now. And yep. it wasn't until Addison mm -hmm. O'Grady got into that game and said, oh, no, you're not. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Now you're going to have to go through me to get two points. This ain't going to be easy tonight for you. That is the most important 15 minutes that was played <laughs> more so than Caitlin Clark. Most I, important 15 minutes. Yes. I I, I mean, if, if – She's going to sleep I, great tonight. She is – Addison mm -hmm. O'Grady is going to have a fantastic night of sleep tonight. <laughs> Yes. And, and, you know, Caitlin's so hard on her and critical of her because she's not quick. But let me tell you something. Tell when you got to move a bigger truck, it doesn't, it, it's not like a Lamborghini. You got to, you got to give it some time. And yeah. I mean, she's just strong and she didn't back down and she's a sweetheart, but she, she just, Stood so strong. I'm so proud of Addison O'Grady. My God, I I see her confidence take a hit time mm. after time after time. And that girl still, after all those hits, stood strong. And she is the only way, she was the only answer in this game. Edinger made a little impact as well. I got to give her yeah, credit. That's the thing. But Addie, I think, was like, she built the wall. And she's like, no, you're not getting past me. And once she made that statement, it changed the whole game. And in my, um, I don't know if Ascent Nutrition is still a sponsor or not, by, but my Ascent Nutrition host of the game is Corey Bratta because of the cowboy hat and Don Pattinson. If you're listening, you, he just won up to you, so you better be ready. When Hawkeye football rolls into town this fall, Don. You better step up your game because you got serious competition. Corey, and go, I, and I, let's I, go, Hawks. I appreciate you. And again, as I always say, your mom named you correctly. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> appreciate him being here, as always. Um, Yes, uh, Steeler Chick 46. Yes, please hit the like button. Kashin said that at the outset. We've got over a thousand people watching right now. What's our I like count at? What? What's our like count at? What's our like count at? Uh, let's just see if we get our official up to date like count. We are at 697. But keep in mind. <laughs> I said, said at least 700. I need three more. Oh, we. <laughs> We can get more than that because you know that those thousand oh, sure. people that are watching there there are they're not the same thousand that the same thousand have not been here since second one. So there's no reason why we can't shoot above and beyond and shoot for the stars on that. So yes, please scroll down, hit the like button, a little thumbs up, very simple to do. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Steeler Chick, Thor, James, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate you being here and for supporting the show. Let's go to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Thank you for calling Iowa post game with Kashin Alexander. You're on the air. Reporting live for Hawkeye Nation out of Western Wisconsin. This is Lowell Mansky. <laughs> Yay! Good to hear your voice, sir. It's been a while. Well, I tell you what, I couldn't even get on your show Saturday. You're so damn popular now that you've got the dynamic duo running hot. It's impressive. All the women on your right or on my right. Well, you have some to do with it because you flip the switch, don't you? No. Uh, sometimes I flip, flip it the wrong way, but uh, <laughs> yes, I guess you could say that. I I got two comments, uh, maybe three, because I always say two and add one. But, you know, they've got uh, post game. They've got CC talking reporters. They got Sid, the Sid Vicious talking reporters and my gal. My gal, it sometimes gets overlooked. Miss Kate Martin. And I think I think Cass said it well Saturday. She said, you know, I got to ask our players to bring their nasty. 
and O'Grady did it. I remember Caitlin, one of the plays of the game that's called leadership, where she just went into the post and just got careened. And she's so good at getting bodied and, and making a basket. And of course, that's where the ankle turn occurred. Mm-hmm. But my favorite was when Kate Martin got knocked to the floor, scratched her ear, hit her side of the head. She stayed down. And the very next possession is what this team is all about. She went at them like a bull in a china closet, just went at them with no fear. And I guess I think that leadership from Caitlin and Kate has to be acknowledged. You know, sometimes you need three scores. Sometimes you need leadership from two people. But uh, Cash, comment about leadership. Coach K was on the radio and he said, you know, it's one thing to have the X and O's and you try to coach well. But sometimes you got to get your players to believe. And we take a few shots at Bluter and probably not wise, but Bluter's got this team believing. Maybe you both want to comment on whatever I said. <laughs> I think that Kate is, she's been clutch. I mean, in a lot of, of the big games for the most part, where we look up and she's got 15 and 10, or we look up and she's got, you know, 17 and 11. Like it's things 21 and six cash tonight, 21 and six. Exactly. She just, you almost wonder at the end of the game, like what did I miss? Like, she's just so she's reliable. She's what Sid is going to be. If that makes sense. Um, I think that Sid is coming up behind Kate. And I think that next year we're going to be able to count on Sid like Kate. Um, in that aspect, but I think Kate was phenomenal. Um, she did what she could down there. She boxed out, she battled, um, she brought her toughness, she brought her grit. Uh, and I think that the whole team believes that they can beat anybody, whether that's from Lisa Bluter or just the fact that you got Caitlin Clark on your team. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's a great combination. Yeah. Cash. When you get back to coaching, and I hope you do, if you were your coach mentality, where would it be between LSU's coach or where would you slide your personality? Because, you know, I don't, I don't like LSU's coach, but I do understand the toughness, the mentality, right. but I like how Bluter represents the university. Where would your mentality and personality slide between those two personalities. Exactly what you just said between. (laughs) I think that I'm very um, outgoing. I'm very, I would be screaming like Kim Mulkey is as far as like celebrating her team. Like that's the one thing I love about Kim Mulkey is that when her team gets a charge or when her team, you know, starts to get fired up, she's the first one fist pumping, you know, screaming for her team. That's me to a T. So I definitely see that part of her. But on the other side of things, I think the way that Coach Bluter plays basketball in the way that everybody gets a touch and we play together and we play beautiful basketball is also me. So I think that if you combine those two, <laughs> that would be me. I knew the answer to that, Cash. I just wanted to ask it anyway. I knew the answer. And I, and I love your answer. Corey and Cash, you do a great job. Corey, you're a very humble podcaster. Something in the chat said you looked like a, a guy on Yellowstone, the guy with the long hair. Uh, you'll have to look at that uh, podcast and go look at Yellowstone. It's a hell of a compliment. You have to grow your hair out a little longer and ride a horse. I've never seen Yellowstone, but I I, I love Wyoming, and I've been to Yellowstone a number of times. So I'll, I'll check that out, Lemansky. Thank you. You don't have you don't you need to widen out your life. You're just so into sports so heavy. You got to kind of be like Cash and widen your horizon. Look, I'll, I'll stick with the Hawkeyes, the Mavs, and my 600 pound life. I'm <laughs> <laughs> those three, those three things. As I say, oh, let's go Hawks. Get one more. Good night. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the phone call. And Ryan, you are right. I'm a much better dresser Ooh. than Kim. That's a fact. Than Kim Mulkey. Well, who is? 100. Oh, what? Can you? But hey, you know what would have been really funny is if she showed up to the game in a in a in a uh, snuggie. In fact, if you ever get back into coaching and you get the cha- opportunity to coach against her, you show up to the game in a snuggie. She was <laughs> relatively calm today, though. 
I was like, okay, one solid color. Like, wait a minute. I was very impressed with her one solid color. Well, yeah. No 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 feathers, no nothing. It was just, (laughs) it was just, you know, normal. Mr. You're the boomerang. Thank you for the super chat. He says, Corey had to donate additional funds for misspelling your name. Well, I appreciate that, first of all, but you forgot the R on the word you on your, so you might have to throw in another super chat. I'm totally kidding. Totally <laughs> joking. Thank you for the super chat year of the boomerang. And uh, how about Tragus44 says, uh, Kashina, the most beautiful thing on the internet. Wow. Well, thank you. That's a massive compliment. Now, since Tragus44 didn't spell your name right, does that mean we're going to get another $50? He's gotta, <laughs> maybe he's going to have to put another t- uh, another uh, super chat in there to correct Tragus, himself. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. The compliment <laughs> um, for Kashin. And let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call-in line. Who's on the line? Hello, Hello yes, this is Jacob. How are you doing? Hey, Jacob. Hi. Yeah, I, I'll make it quick because you said to do that. I won't uh, go off the path like I have before. Uh, great inbound defense tonight. Everybody was looking at the ball, so they got the message on that. Um, with <laughs> Addison, the thing that – uh, she maybe isn't getting enough credit right now or talked about is she took shots away from the basket and she made one and the other one rimmed out. And then she actually made a good move to the basket that missed. And then that drew angel out. So it wasn't just her defense that she was playing and rebounding she actually was opening up the lane and that did allow Caitlin to get there because Addison, for some reason, and I'm um, happy, she decided, you know what, maybe I'm limited in certain areas, but I am going to bring everything I I can. And those little things she was doing, those very little things she was doing end up uh, um, being a big deal throughout the game. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more, Kashin. Uh, can you uh, add to that? Or no, I think that. Listen, I have praised <laughs> Addison O'Grady, and I'm very happy that we can we continually talk about her because you're right. I think that one, her shot didn't look bad at all. That's the one number one. No. It actually looked good, and I think that that is something that did help us because Angel did have to come out a little bit further um, than she would normally, and unfortunately with her ankle the way it was, she's already not a great move a mover laterally. So put that on top of a, uh, a sore ankle that made it worse. <laughs> so I think so that. Match, Go ahead. That, uh, when the shot clock went down, it was about, I think it was about four or so minutes left in the fourth. Maybe it was less than four. Shot clock goes down. Kate gets the ball and hits a fadeaway through a, cru- a crucial oh, yeah, jumper. That was, <laughs> that was a crucial jumper because we kind of given up, gave up a few uh, baskets um, yeah. because we took bad shots. Um, and uh, like the other person said, and I, I, I can't go without not saying it, that I also apologize for what happened, and that's all we need to really say about that. But – um, last thing I'll say is, uh, Kashin, if you do become a coach again, can this end of game, less than a minute defense, can you please use this as a coaching opportunity to say, do not play defense like that. Don't foul and get four point plays. Lord, please let's not. What are you doing? Uh, was, it was, it was unbelievable. Really it should, it should have been like a 10, 12 point game at the end of the game and said it was whatever it was because we were just making. Yeah. If we wouldn't have been up by 14, have been nine or eight, they're right back in the game. Yeah. 
Uh, and it was so unbelievable watching it. Like this, wait, wait a second. This doesn't look right. What's happening here? What a foul on a what? <laughs> and the person who made it of all people, Caitlin, what are you doing jumping up on shots in the, out there that deep? You never do that. What is going on? Things, to, um, things to keep you humble. Not that you should need that heading into a final four game, but things to look at on tape and say, Hey, we get down to a, a last minute situation against USC. Can't make this mistake again. I think those are mistakes you don't want to make, but Kashin, is there an aspect of mistakes in a loss? I always ask coach close this with the men. Is there an aspect of, Hey, we made mistakes, but we won. And so this is the best case scenario because we have things to work on. We're not going to get we're not going to get too high. We can fix these things, and we, and we didn't have to lose to to learn that lesson. Um, yes, I think it's a lesson. I'm sure they already know. They might have got a little caught up, but I think that at least it's a lesson you learn in a win, not a loss, to end your season. <laughs> Any final words, sir? Before I let you go. Yeah, I just real quick, if that would have been a loss, that would have been the sole crushing loss of the next hundred years if we would have lost that. Uh, but as far as Caitlin's turnovers earlier in the game, I think it was just the drop of emotion. Adrenaline was running high, and it's sooner or later that's going to drop. And midway through the uh, first, I think it just kind of dropped and she just got in that quick spot where we all have kind of been in where we get real excited and then we're like, oh, and there's a little drain. And then she just got dropped down a little bit and she needed to gather herself, probably needed to get taken out for a minute or two, but um, she didn't. But that's my last question and I promise I'm going is, is there any concern about how quickly this turnaround <laughs> time is after this long game, especially from – Caitlin and Gabby, are they going to have enough time to recover because it's going to be more media presence and all that stuff? Thank you, sir. Well, they're not going to do anything tomorrow. <laughs> right? Um, most likely, wake up leisurely. Um, and my guess is they will get on a plane <laughs> and head to Cleveland um, and take the rest of the day, relax, etc. Um, probably do a little film that day, a little recovery with the muscles, some tart cherry juice, I'm sure is somewhere in there. <laughs> um, and then they'll have a light practice on Tuesday. Wait, no, where are we? Wednesday, <laughs> light practice on Wednesday. And then they'll ramp it up a little bit on Thursday and then play on Friday. So they'll get, they'll get their rest. But at this point, they've already done it. They've had the big 10 tournament. They've done it with the NCAA tournament this far. And Colorado wasn't a t crazy tough game. And honestly speaking, I don't even think this game was tough. If we're being honest, um, I think that it was a hard game as far as like physicality, but I wouldn't say I'm like, oh my God, we're going to be tired because the only reason why I'm saying that is because LSU is not a running team. I feel like you're more tired with a running team than you are like just tussling down there. You know, like, it's a little bit different when you're playing an Iowa. You get what I'm saying? Like that, you're going to be tired after that game. But LSU is more just muscling it up. You can take an ice bath and be fine with that. You got ripped um, after this past live stream because you made the comment that Caitlin Clark doesn't run. And I tried to reason with these idiots on the, I'm sorry to call them idiots, but that's what they are, um, that, uh, Pretty sure an all Big Ten, former all Big Ten guard understands who's a quote unquote running scorer and shooter. In other words, running off screen. We all knew the people who took the time to listen to what you had to say knew right. what you meant. Um, it's like, again, people don't like me bringing up Luka Doncic, but Luka Doncic is not a runner, right? Like Luka Doncic, yes. if you're guarding him, it's a tough assignment. But he's not going to like wear you off because he's running baseline to baseline and off screens. I mean, I'd rather guard, as far as fatigue is concerned, I'd rather guard Luca than someone like Clay Thompson or Ray Allen or one of these. Stephen Curry. I don't want to ever guard him. Okay. Oh, Curry as well. Yeah. Or even, yeah, you said Clay Thompson. I wouldn't want to guard him either. Like, what? No, okay. I would much rather guard, like, you know, a one on one Kevin Durant kind of player or something like that because it's just, they take breaks. Like yep. in the sense of that. Now I will say this. 
I saw Caitlyn running off more screens today than I, like multiple screens, than I have seen. Like she gives one, she gets two. She gives one, she gets one. I saw more of that today than I have in a while. Yeah. And I wonder if that was part of their game plan is to tire them out. Because again, normally we see Caitlyn coming off tons of ball screens, right? She's off a ball screen. She comes back, she plays with it. But there was a quite a few where she was, she'd give the ball up, she'd go set a down screen and she'd come off two staggered screens on the other side. Like it was stuff that I hadn't seen her do as much in the game. Um, and honestly, I, there was a time where I was scared in the third quarter. I was like, all right, Caitlin, slow down, relax. Cause I didn't want her to burn out before the fourth quarter. And it was almost like she had this look in her eyes where she was like, nah, give me the ball. Like, I'm no, give me the ball. And, you know, we've seen a tired fourth quarter Caitlin before. And I was nervous. But she proved me wrong. So, hmm. Tragus, again, thank you for the super chat. And I see you've dropped something else in here. So we're going to get to your, your other comment here in a second. Terry, appreciate the super chat. Terry, Corey, great show. Kashin, always look forward to your analysis and great insights. Go Hawks. Thank you, Terry. And thank you for being a, a premium member, as is indicated with the little logo there next to your name. So thank you for that. Always enjoy and certainly would uh, reiterate what he had to say about you, Kashin. Tyler, thank you, Tyler. And uh, he says, any chance we can get a Hawkeye hangout with Kashin previewing the final four before Friday night? Well, that's a, a good idea. That's something that we certainly can consider if, if Kashin can work it into her schedule. But we'll have to have that conversation off the air. Um, definitely we'll be doing some some preview content, whatever that may look like. I wish there was a longer prep because it'd be – I mean, I just wish that we didn't have to think about a game until at least Saturday or Sunday. But right. Friday and then Sunday for the national championship, it's the beautiful thing and the difficult thing about the tournament is uh, you pack everything on the weekend, and it makes for kind of a – I don't know. I, I think it's a weird – now, where, where are they going to be playing? Where's the final four being held, Kashin? Cleveland. Oh, it's in Cleveland. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. All right. I didn't know that. So that's Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I'm pretty sure it's in Cleveland. Thank you, Tyler. And uh, Mr. Year of the Boomerang, since he misspelled your, he he did add another super chat. Thank you, sir. He says, you are correct, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, I love that. Year of the Boomerang. All right. Um, we got a lot to get to, folks. We're an hour and 15 in. And if, Kashin, at any point you need to just say, I'm going to bed and uh, taking my Snuggie with me, you... For my Hawkeyes, never. <laughs> <laughs> we love the, the cash money energy here. So um, let's go to our next Iowa Smokehouse caller. We've got Tony the Tiger here. Tony, welcome. Oh, um, Kashin. Hey, are we cutting teeth tonight? No, uh, good. it's a it's it's a schedule thing where tonight is really good. Okay. Um, I will give you any doctor's note, as I told you on Twitter. I will try to forge any doctor's note. So if you don't want to work Friday afternoon <laughs> or even Friday, <laughs> I'll try to make that. I'll work. be working from home on Friday, which is even crazier. Not gonna lie, because that's gonna be even harder to focus. Uh, I can understand with that. Yeah. Um, I want to say this. I've just got three things, and I'll dip out after that. Um, I retweeted it and try to tell people, but you will not get any better analysis than here. There was zero, and I repeat, zero people, and I follow a lot of people because I have no life, who mentioned that <laughs> Poa should be guarding CC. She only played 15 minutes tonight. And that's it. And yeah. nobody else mentioned about Poa should be on CC. Nobody. Well, that's look how it looked out how it worked out for him. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 40, 41, 41 for. Uh, I mean, how many points has she combined for in the last two games? Because we estimated last game with her assists, with her points, it was like seventy. Today. She was 62 for our 80, whatever it was in the last game. They've talked about it at um, 62. Today. Okay. All right. So maybe a couple less than I thought, but 62 in that game had to have been at least 65 today. She had 12 yeah. assists. 
<laughs> 65 and again 194 points so uh that's just insan- insanity and there were moments in that like i say in the third quarter where i was like all right don't don't shoot that don't shoot that and then she makes it <laughs> and so eventually i got to the point tony where i'm like every time down the court especially when they're hanging on to like a six point lead it gets down to five then it's nine then it's six i'm like i just want caitlin to take the ball and shoot because to me like that, that's our best that's the best offense in that situation like that's the best offense like just go up there and launch one because it, it seems like they're going in they were going in about half the time that will uh transition into my next question which is can basketball IQ IQ sorry be coached or are you just born with it like I ask this because sometimes the shot or choices are something left to be desired in my opinion like is that something you're just born with or can you coach it i think everything has a ceiling i think that a person could get better but that requires a lot of i think some people are just born with it where they just see the game in a different light um I think that's why I was as good as I was. I don't think I was like overly talented. I, my IQ was very high. And I think that LeBron James IQ is extremely high, right? Caitlin Clark sees things that nobody else sees. <laughs> like, you know, I think that some things you are born with. If you want to be better, it's going to take a lot of work to be better, but you still can never get on a Caitlin Clark, a LeBron James level. You, It just, you can't, you, you can't get that. Either you're born with it or you're not, but you can be better at what you currently have. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I mean, 100% it does. It's just, I still want to, like, I've just made those two points. That's all I'll close out with is all of this information is free that both of you are giving us. Like, Corey, you're providing the platform, and Kashin, you're giving this here. Like, no one covered like i said the in-depth analysis you gave and it needs to be appreciated way more i think but i appreciate that tony that that that, that, that that's all i want to get to and I'll close can it. i just say one thing real quick because i know you're big into men's basketball it is utah at the pentagon didn't you tell me that they had opted out or something they did and then they opted back in so it's you thought to get a match or rematch of the NIT. All right. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. I will be at the men's I will be at the women's game as well, though. I'll say that. I have tickets to the women's game. I've secured tickets to the women's game. They I can't remember off my memory, but I have tickets to the women's game in Sioux Falls, and I will be at the men's game in Sioux Falls. So I'll see you guys uh Friday night. Okay, Tony. I may have to go up to Sioux City. I've wanted to go over to the uh, the Pentagon. Sioux Falls, I'm sorry. I keep saying very Sioux nice City. place. You've been to the Pentagon before, Cash? Mm-hmm. What, why were you at the Pentagon? Two different occasions. Um, when I was coaching Division II, we had our, um, at Concordia St. Paul in Minnesota, we had our um, conference championship there. And we actually won, so that was fantastic. And then we also played, when I was coaching at NDSU, we had a game there. So I've been there twice. Before we get to our next caller, Couple things because I will openly admit I do a poor job of promoting certain things. Uh-huh. All right. So please uh, figure out StreamYard. If you've not tried out StreamYard to join in and either talk on camera or just uh, call in via StreamYard, the link is in our description, right at the top of the description of the stream. Also, here's the deal, folks. Jeez. If you have not gone over to our Facebook page, Be sure to do that. We've got like 800 people still watching here, about an hour and a half in. Be sure to head over to From the Hawkeye of the Storm because I've done a bad job. And again, I'm I'm fine with admitting that. I've done a poor job of building the Facebook page. Our guy, Kyle, who is in our queue, who's going to be joining the show here in a minute, has helped with this, but uh, I need to do better. So please head over to Facebook, hit the follow button, hit the like button. Very easy to do that. And, um, Again, it's free. Like Tony said, I'm, yes, I'm asking for your support. We're asking for your support, but it is free. From the Hawkeye of the Storm on Facebook, the link to our Facebook page is in the description. This number is atrocious. 582 followers. 
let's get that thing up to like a thousand. So uh, Marcus, John, Clint, all just liked it. Thank you. Please head over to Facebook from the Hawkeye of the Storm and like, follow the page. Well, all right. Um, me. Why can you find it? It's in the description. Oh, you put it in there? Okay, let me go yeah, back there. in the description. People have told me that... I can't see that. I'll find it later. People I'll tell do me it right now. For some reason, it doesn't show up when they search it on Facebook. I don't know why no, that No, it is. does not. We got to fix that, Kyle and Corey. I have looked for a way to reach out to Facebook. I've sent them messages, and I don't know how to... What else? Not the hate numbers, though. Okay. I'll look into that. Maybe we can get Zuckerberg on the show, and we can ask him. Let's go back to oh, our man. Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Thank you for calling Iowa Post Game with Kashin Alexander. Who's on the line? Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, hello. Hello. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Pretty good, I bet. We are doing great. How are you? Good. It was a hell of a game. It sure was. I agree. Century one. I was glad to see Caitlin come out of her three-point shooting slump. She's been in. Oh. Yeah, that was a pretty, pretty, pretty good timing. Yeah, yeah. I went back after the Saturday game and went back. She had really had a good three-pointing shooting night since she did forty-nine points. You, she, if you figure it out, she was was shooting under thirty percent from three hey. since then. I so I'm glad to see she. But she said she's been having pressure on her till they got out of. Out of uh, Carver there the other night, she said uh, she felt we leave. They they were a lot of pressure because they didn't want to lose there. Yeah, you yeah. you do wonder how much that was a factor. I know it's been brought up, but it does seem like once she's, I know she didn't shoot great against Colorado, but we talk about the fifteen assists, one turn or two turnovers. I mean, she's just right. been really good since she got out to Albany, and that should give fans hope. Right. I mean, and, there's still a, a large group of how, Hawkeye how fans much- out there. Yeah, and how much screaming and yelling have you seen her do in the last two games? And, uh, she and her zen right now. Did yeah. y'all see yeah. that one of our players, not Caitlin, was fussing at the ref, and Kate told them, let it go, don't worry about it? I was like, wait a minute now. Let me find <laughs> out Caitlin trying to calm people down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought the whole team did good today. I mean, they had some little hiccups but you know they got out of sync there LSU got them out of sync during the end of the first quarter or so and then they got back into it Absolutely. you know I was surprised that uh, I didn't know she got 12 assists tonight until it got to the end of the game and they mentioned it so, I yeah. mean she had another good night on assists and and I, I think you all pulled together. Absolutely, sir. And uh, I know you waited on hold for a while, so thank you for doing that because we we appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're in for an exciting week, regardless of what happens on Friday. This is such a a monumental achievement, and we'll look back at these two yeah. years, and it will only cement yeah. Caitlin Clark's legacy as the greatest Hawkeye to to play. Well, yeah, for at least for now, she'll be uh, the you know she's the greatest scorer play the game so absolutely and and i can remember the first time i seen her i told you before i was you know i'm a a buckeye fan and uh some i heard someone talking about her and i turned the game on and i see her going down the court the game had started and she gets down there about the edge of the logo and throws one up and it goes in and i go what the <laughs> you're, you know, you're and not... then she does it again yes. you know and that it makes the game exciting. You know, you don't have to dunk the ball to make it an exciting game. I agree. You know? Absolutely. Uh, appreciate the phone call, sir. And, and please, okay. please call back. You have a, okay. Have a Thanks. good one. Thank you, sir. You too. All right. Um, Iowa defeating LSU 94, 87. I want to give everybody an update on the other final four game. Um, and of course, Iowa playing the winner of UConn USC right now. That game, end of the third quarter, UConn leads 55-51 to 51 in over at the Moda Center. 55-51. Who are we rooting for in that game, Kashin? I, I could care less. 
I like them both. I mean, I, it, at this point, it don't matter. <laughs> like, we were so nervous about LSU, rightfully so. I don't even care who we get next. I, I really don't. I don't care. Well, I don't care. I'll tell you what. Uh, I am more nervous about a potential rematch with South Carolina than I was about the rematch with LSU. Okay, yeah, well, that's guaranteed, Corey. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying with this one. Although UConn beat Iowa, what was it last year in the, the early season tournament out in, I think it was out in Portland, right? Ironically enough. And um, so... I mean, these teams are familiar with each other. Paige Beckers is familiar with Caitlin Clark. I know the media, a lot of the media probably wants to see Juju versus Caitlin. And mm -hmm. this game is uh, living up to the hype right now out in, out in Portland. Paige with 19 points. Uh, Aaliyah oh. Edwards with 14 points. And uh, for Juju Watkins, eight, uh, excuse me, 16 points. She's struggling from the field right now. Five of 15. And uh, Mackenzie mm -hmm. Forbes also struggling. Six of 17 with 18 points. But they are hanging in there down four. Start of the fourth quarter. So we'll keep our eye on that. Tragus 44. Look at this. He corrects Kashin and throws in a super chat. Thank you, Tragus 44. MVP. 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 Now you, is there, uh, here's the deal, Kashin. Is there anything about this comment, the one that's on the screen, that I could respond to? You know what I want to say on this? Yes, I know that. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it because I don't not I'm try. I'm going to say it. It's the thought that counts. Uh, what's his name? Tragus. Tragus 44. But it's actually spelled Ooh. like machine, but with a K. K-A-C-H-I-N-E. But listen, I appreciate you nonetheless, sir. MVP in my book. Absolutely closer than everything. absolutely closer than the first attempt and the super chat. Very much appreciated. So, <laughs> um, how about Eric says uh, 600 pound life best show ever. Doctor now rocks. And this is a Never true story. I, I think our guy Kyle can attest to this. Uh, I'm not going to put it on the screen, but I absolutely have a picture, multiple pictures, actually a picture of me in front of Dr. Now's office. Um, so that is a fact. Um, that that is a fact. Uh, Kyle, is this a fact? Is this true? <laughs> it is. I think you DM'd. It. I think you DM'd it to me at one point. I need to scroll back and find it. It was just. A, it was just a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just a few weeks ago. I was at Doctor Now's office. Not not for weight loss surgery, but anyways. Um, Kyle, appreciate you calling into our Iowa Smokehouse line. Uh, what are your thoughts for Kashin and I? Well, you know, we do a lot of hand wringing before games about X's and O's, and it's it's very fun to hear both of you break down basketball. I very much enjoy it, which, as Tony mentioned, happens for free here on YouTube and not in a ripoff message board run mm -hmm. by a bunch of guys that never played sports, but we'll leave that where it is. Um, I think Kashin pretty much nailed the breakdown of this game. I think it's really like I, I need to go back and watch it just to make sure, but like man, it was accurate from like POA, like Tony talked about, to the the bunnies inside the LSU missed, which they missed a lot of. And I'm putting, I'm putting Angel Reese in that ball screen. That's yes. why Haley Van Luke was getting cooked. Cooked, absolutely. No help. <laughs> so I know, you know, we break down the X's and O's a lot. I think tonight, and I'm going to ask because we have some people that call in and we ramble a little bit. Do you mind giving me? Two to three minutes to go on a rant here because I want to do some celebrating. You, you yeah, go on. All right. Right. All right. <laughs> I can talk about, you know, we had a we played a dominant paint team tonight and they shot 39% from the floor. We could talk about how a team that had 23 offensive rebounds scored 14 second chance points, which is terrible. We could talk about how genuinely worried all of us were after the 25 to nine LSU run in the first and second quarter. Cause that scared me. I was, I was sweating bullets at that point. And we could talk about how our Iowa Hawkeyes responded by winning the next 13 minutes of the game, 39 to 18 after that run, 39 to 18 after the 25 to nine run. So 
those things are all relevant. But Caitlin Clark just took a team that went to the Final Four one time in 50 years. Iowa basketball has been around for 50 years this year. And this program has been to the Final Four one time before her. It's now been there twice with her. Courtesy of last year, averaging 32 and 10 in the tournament. That's what she averaged for the whole tournament last year from start to finish. 32 and 10. That's just ridiculous. Absolutely insane. And she follows that up by dropping a 40 piece in the biggest game of the year that like, I don't know if you guys were like following sports center and like social media and everything. Like they covered this game. ESPN did and Fox like an NBA finals game. Yeah. Like the coverage was very, very similar to the way that they would cover an NBA finals game or a Super Bowl or anything like that. Like it was crazy to watch. Like they were on first take, they were on undisputed. They were on like the top of the hour at sports center. Like, it's just incredible to see the game that was built up and how they marketed this game. It was unbelievable. Gabby Marshall, as impactful of a three-point performance as you'll ever see. And we we have, you know, said our thing about Gabby at certain times in the year when she's not making shots. And she didn't really make shots tonight. She didn't take a lot of shots tonight. But hustled for 40 minutes. I mean, I don't think people understand how hard that is. 40 minutes of basketball going up and down the floor under that pressure. And she was, you know, she was at every loose ball. She was guarding everybody, you know, 110% the entire game. Addison O'Grady, round of applause. Lost her minutes, like, early on in the season, through the middle of the season, and got criticized by a lot of people for her apathy, I guess. I, I don't know how we want to describe it, but she was, you know, people said she was a little apathetic. She was a little bit, lacked a little bit of heart at times. And she just showed up and did everything that we could have asked her to do in the minutes that we gave her tonight. Everything. Like there wasn't anything that I looked at and thought, man, we need to get, you know, Addie back out of the game and get Hannah back in the game. Like she held her own against an all American player tonight for 15 minutes. And that's really, really impressive. And Kate Martin. Wait, first of all, I think we all need to go and place a bet on the announcers calling Kate the glue during the broadcast because they do it every game, but it is so true. Um, she's played like what was 146 basketball games for Iowa. Was that the stat that they said in the middle of the game? Something like that. 140, 46 or 150 games for the black and gold. And she comes up big every time that they need her. Like this was a tough matchup for her. This was a, you know, she was, physically outmatched and she comes up with 21 six and 39 minutes of just absolute heart and absolute fight. And that was really, really impressive. But now, you know, we had, they LSU had some fun with us. We had some people, I don't, not everybody was here last year. I don't know if Corey told you about this, Kashid, but we had some, we had some LSU fans come and raid our stream last year. Right. Well, they've been on they've been on for the last year on all for kinds the last of entire year okay? okay so they had some fun with us it's now our turn to have some fun okay it's my turn to have some fun because they have been in our comments all year long angel reese seven of 21 from the field three of eight from the free throw line and one of 10 in the second half and she got bothered by the backup center of a team that everyone said was unathletic she was. If you are that great player that's and that game changer that you say you are, that cannot happen. If that's, that's if you are who you say you are, you can't show up in that game and shoot one of 10 in the second half guarded by Addison O'Grady. You just can't. And Haley Van Lith, I know you said you felt bad for her, Kashin. I did. <laughs> she couldn't hit water if she fell out of a boat. It was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. I felt bad she joined her. the reigning and defending national champions – all to lose to the same team in the Elite Eight again. And yep. she loses to Caitlin Clark in the Elite Eight. Last year, she loses to Caitlin Clark in the Elite Eight, and Caitlin drops 41, 12, and 10 on her head. And this year, she loses to Caitlin Clark again, and she drops 41, 12, and 7 on her head. So I don't know. Is she just done? Like, she, she's got to be done playing Caitlin. She can't play against Caitlin anymore. 
because she just got two 41 piece. Well, she ain't. Four. She done. Caitlin gone. So she, she yeah, she I know. Died. She can't ever see Caitlin on any basketball court ever again because <laughs> she just she's gonna have PTSD 30 years from now watching Caitlin Clark play. And Kim Mulkey, it takes a special kind of person to stick. What is Haley Van Lith? Five seven, five six, something like that. It takes a special kind of person to stick that Haley Van Lith on the greatest player maybe in the history of the game for like 60% of the game. Like she was on Caitlin the like most of the game. Like yeah. I don't care if you think like she, that post game comment about nobody can guard Caitlin. It was like she almost said basically like nobody can guard Caitlin so we might as well not try. Like we might as well just guard everybody else. Like That's what I got. You're gonna get you're gonna get 40. You're gonna get 40 on your head. Like you're just asking for it. And like I understand that like that you know, moving somebody else onto her would have had you know bad matchups in other places. I don't care. You can't that's so disrespectful to a great player to put that person on. Like if they if if like the Miami Heat put like somebody like Mario Chalmers on Steph Curry back in the day or like whoever Matthew Del Vadova was a good defender. But like if they, if they put somebody like that, that was like a below average defender on somebody like a Steph Curry and they were like, you know, Steph Curry's unguardable. So we might as well guard everybody else. What would everybody say? Like, that's just stupid. Like you're just I asking mean, for when Caitlin you. saw her on her. She was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. She was <laughs> licking her lips. <laughs> like she was like, she had to, she, you know what? If I was Caitlin, I'd be looking at Kaylee Van Lith and I'd be thinking, are you serious? Like it's going to be this easy. Really? Like I don't know you, what they were if you were, if you were her, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be all over it. You'd be so excited. But anyways, yeah, it takes, it takes a special coach to put, Haley Van Lith on the greatest player of all time. And I'll say this. I bet she wishes she had Alexis Morris now instead of Haley Van Lith. I bet she wishes she had Jasmine Carter now instead of Haley Van Lith. But it's okay, Kim, because you had hundreds of huddles over the course of the season. No, that team gathered around hundreds of times throughout the season. You spoke to them and you motivated them. You said that they were way more motivated than the Iowa Hawkeyes. What did she say? I can't imagine that I was more motivated than LSU to play this game. Garbage. You had hundreds of huddles over the course of this season. She's got one more huddle left, Kasheen. What's that huddle? It's four words. Mm-mm, Ryan got it. One, two, three. Cancun. Enjoy your off season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're One, two, three, right. Cancun. <laughs> LSU is gonna come back with some kind of fury next year. Um, don't want to be a part of it. Um, because <laughs> we won't. It it's over now. It's over now. They got. They got. They ain't losing a single soul. Like everybody coming back. The, I don't Angel, even want, you think Angel's coming back? I, I, if I was her, I would. Why? Why would you say that? Because I don't. I personally don't think that she is ready for the WNBA to make a team just yet. And so I feel like she needs to work on her offensive ability, not just Debo and people in the post. You can't do that in WNBA. That's not going to fly. So she needs to create some post moves in order to be able to really stick with a team and not just be a one and done or having to go overseas and come back. I feel like she really needs – I feel like she really needs that extra development if she can get it. I mean, I would totally agree. It's You know what it's like, uh, Kyle, and some people are going to resent this comment. I think it's very similar to what I have said about Tony Perkins. Um, like a lot of potential there. And obviously Angel's accomplished more than Tony has, right? I mean, she's SEC player of the year. Tony was what, second team all Big Ten this year. But I mean, I think there's a couple things that if you shore up in her game, some of them may be physical, but a couple of things you show up in her game, she's got a chance to be really, really good at the next level. But yeah. until you do that, I think there is some, I agree with Kashin, there's some risk there. She doesn't yeah. have a 12, I mean, she doesn't have a 12 foot jump shot. Like she outside of 10 feet, Angel Reese can't do anything. Right. Like and feet. she still doesn't really have post moves on the block. Like no. she just, she just, <laughs> bully, she just tries to bully people with physicality. And that's, you know, yeah. that's fine. That works against some people. That's, you know, that's fine. But, it doesn't mean it's not it's not going to work professionally. I don't think. Yeah, so I would that would be my my 
that for better her chances to stay because it's hard to make a WNBA team, okay? Yeah. So we yeah. saw Megan Gustafson and the trouble she had. She finally has figured it out and she's now you know, a good person on the team, but or in the league. But Angel needs she needs a little help. She does. There's what? Is there two two hundred ish players in the WNBA or a little less? I don't know. They add them as they go. I forgot how many roster spots they are. They keep changing it. So I'm not 100% certain, but it's still hard. And then yeah. you got to try to beat out vets who've been there, done that. It's not easy. It's not. Yeah. Even somebody like Kofi, like we saw at uh, Illinois a couple years ago, like he yeah. he did the same thing. He came to college and bullied everybody and then no shot at yeah. me in the NBA. Where is he at now? Is he overseas? Yeah, he's overseas. He's in, Where is he is? He in Taiwan or China. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, Kyle, I uh, appreciate you being here, sir. And uh, I gave you more airtime than most people because you are a part of this platform now. So <laughs> thank you for that. Can you say it with me one more time, Kashin? One, two, three, Cancun. Cancun! <laughs> go get some sun. Go over, go, ever, go over and subscribe to Kyle Spence Golf. There you go. Yes, 700 sir. people on here, go subscribe to Kyle Spence Golf. Even if I'll you don't see you jump, golf. right? <laughs> I'll see some kind of joke. All right. Have a good night, guys. All right. Let me know when you want to get beat on the golf course, Kyle. Thank you. Anytime. Anytime. Anyway, anyplace. Mavs have won 11 straight. Have a nice night. Uh, <laughs> no. All right. Uh, let's let's uh, let's beat through these uh, last few callers and comments. Uh, Eric, yes. We Thank you for that super chat earlier. Michael, the slow motion replay of CeCe after draining a three-point uh, into commercial. On the background, you see Mulkey screaming for a travel is so appropriate. <laughs> I, um, I, that one. I just thought that the moment of the game, Kashin, the moment that summed up the entire night was when Angel Reese committed her fifth foul and as a result, fouled out of the game. And you have Kim Mulkey with her patented, twisted up look on her face, screaming in dire agony because she knew at that moment. She screwed up. She knew at that moment it was over. It was done. She was cooked. That was a beautiful moment. So anyways, uh, thank you, Michael, for the super chat. And Gixer, seeing uh, Gixer 1000, seeing my 11-year-old son so happy and watching this. Awesome memories. Thanks, Aww. ladies. Cool comments to have and uh, good to know. I mean, again, you, you think about what this is... Uh, for the younger generation, um, like all the 11 year olds out there and the, the, the young girls, the young boys who are getting into the sport, not because of the Iowa men, but because of Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women, it is a special thing here in the state of Iowa. So appreciate the super chat, uh, Gixer 1000, uh, update for everybody, 253 left in the elite eight contest regional final between UConn and USC and the three seed Huskies lead by 670 to 64. We'll keep everybody posted on that one. Cub Hawk. 1237. Awesome show. Go Hawks. Never thought I would be so into women's basketball. I love that. Those are great. How does that make you like, how does that make you feel as a former player? It's got to feel good, right? Proud. Honestly, I'm just happy. I think they said it in the pregame. They were talking about, I guess, giving kudos to everybody that paved the way. And it's like, you can't help but be happy to know that all day that is all my timeline was talking about. That NBA players were talking about a Stephen A. Smith. Everybody was watching this game. And it's like that is so exciting and refreshing to just be in this space and be able to witness it. Absolutely. Thank you, Cub Hawk, for the super chat. T Hawkeye, LSU looked tired in the third quarter, short on shots. That's something you said about Colorado. Did you see that out of the Tigers as well? They were tired. And uh, Katie Lee, thank you for the super chat. I'll try to find this comment because sometimes I know people, if they're trying to submit a super chat, they don't get to the super chat. So I'll try to find your comment, Katie. I do appreciate the donation. D. Rolfson says, are you a Templeton man or other? Um, I'm assuming he's asking me what type of liquor I like. <laughs> Is that what he's asking okay. me? I like oh, a good you, bourbon. Listen, you asking the wrong one. I don't even know what Templeton is. So I can't. I, can't. I like a good bourbon. I'll say that. Uh, I'll, I'll just okay. leave I like a good solid bourbon. So I guess that fits the cowboy hat to some what extent. What UConn Joseph. and Gino is doing this year is crazy. But go ahead. 
Yeah, UConn's going to win this game. They're up nine now, 73-64 with under two to go. So it looks like it's going to be Huskies and Hawkeyes. Uh, Joseph says, can you comment on how fast you thought the game was? I've never seen anything like it. It was fast. I couldn't catch my breath, and I wasn't even playing. So I can only imagine the people playing it and how they felt. Um, that it was, it was definitely Iowa's pace. We played the pace we want to play at. All right, let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Thank you for calling Iowa post game with Kashin Alexander. Who's on the line? Hey, it's Pat. Hey, Pat. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing just um, I just want to give a little credit to, to Tash. On Saturday night, I was listening to the show and Cash basically said, uh, how do you beat a team from the SEC? And she didn't say this, but I interpreted it as <laughs> I would just run their raggedy ass. And I mean, you right. That. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> okay. And, and Cash mentioned that while LSU was strong and disciplined and rebounded the ball and fought for everything, they looked a little slow and they looked a little tired. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and she just said, I just run them. I just run them. And, and I thought, you know what? I was going to win this game because Iowa can run. And Anyway, just a, a little shout out to Cash. And uh, so this this game out west is closing in. And maybe Cash can chime in on this. But I look at the Iowa team versus the LSU team. And and the physique of the Iowa girls is a, a little bit leaner. They're, they're not as big. They're not as strong, but they can run. And then I'm looking at UConn against USC, and it looks like UConn's going to win that game tonight. Same thing. USC's a little bit bigger, but same thing. I think UConn is running USC's braggity ass. So, Cash, thanks. Great win for the Hawks. Thanks for your show. Uh, look forward to the next game. You guys have a good night. Thank you, Thank Pat. Thank you. Appreciate Pat being here. And uh, Lisa, thank you for being here. Always good to see you, Lisa, here in our chat. Um, Robert uh, brings up the USC bigs, but I think this is kind of irrelevant because as Pat brought up, now it's a nine-point lead for the Huskies, 76-67 with a minute to go, under a minute to go. So keep our eyes on that. How about Lisa Patterson? This is uh, the lovely wife of Coach John Patterson, says Coach P and I are happy to report that Hawkeye fans here in Dallas are happy. iClub watch party was great. Good to hear from you, Lisa, and glad to know you guys made it down to uh, the Dallas area. And um, safe travels back. Aspire to Cycle says, what does this do for recruiting? This is a good question for Kashin. What's happening with recruiting as these games are going on? Do we have a recruiting staff that's in touch with players we want to recruit? I know uh, our guy Kyle sent this to me earlier in the day. Um, what's her face from Virginia Tech entered the portal? What is her name now? Uh, Georgia Amore. Georgia Amore. Thank you. And he said, uh, you know, go all in on this this young lady. I don't know how you feel about Georgia Amore. She's and, going and, to Kentucky, y'all. Leave that be. Go ahead. Okay. So you you have a better you better insight on this than than She's most. She's going to Kentucky. But you have to be involved. Like even though you're making a run, you Ooh. have to be involved with the portal right now, don't you? Yes, you do. It's the worst thing the NCAA could have done. But whatever. Um, yes. Uh, you have to be involved. You have to be in touch. You have to be doing all of those. So whoever isn't in charge of the scout of whoever y'all playing next is on the phone. And they are calling these recruits, whoever they may be interested in, getting watching film on them, doing those kind of things. So they may not be scouting the opponent they're playing. They are now scouting the portal. Uh, but, yeah, you have to. Uh, I'm sure they already have an idea of what they're looking for, so that narrows down the portal quite a bit. But still, you still got to do it. 
this is a question that uh, this is the super chat question. Thank you, Katie, for that super chat. How will team the team prep or how will team prep be different if they end up playing UConn, which again, it appears that they will. What can you tell us about UConn other than they're guided by Leah Edwards, Paige Beckers and a hall of fame coach, maybe the greatest coach to ever coach on this side of college basketball and Gino Arama. I can honestly say that I have not watched a lot of UConn this year. One, because they've been injured. And two, um, I just haven't watched them. I don't really care for UConn. But I'm going to have to watch a little bit more UConn. Um, obviously, they got a good one-two punch in Paige and Aaliyah Edwards. They are very short-handed like we are. Um, this is a game, however, that we can use a Kylie Fearbach or a Taylor McCabe or something like that. Um, so that allows us to be a little bit deeper, uh, which is a good thing in our mindset, but Ali Edwards fouls like crazy. She's always in foul trouble. So it's very easy to get her in foul trouble. And I think that's something that we have got to talk about, especially in the post. She's not like a major shot blocker, but she just is always clumsy with her hands and her arms. Like she usually has really unintelligent fouls. Like, it's just, why are you, why are you putting your hand down? Just keep your hand straight up, like stuff like that. So we can get her in foul trouble. I think that helps us. Um, But honestly speaking, I don't think there is a huge difference in how we prepare between the two. Um, Because although USC is bigger, they still play like guards. So it's not really anything different in that aspect. I do think we run the heck out of them just like we do. We have to play Iowa basketball at the end of the day. But they ain't got no depth, none at all. They worse than us. <laughs> Austin, thank you for this comment. Says uh, Caitlin, might say this wasn't a revenge game, but only because she tries to say all the right things. It was personal. Can't listen tonight. First time I've come on here, but listening, I listen on Apple. Love cash. So, a couple things. Thank you, Austin, for being a part of the show, whether it be on the podcasted version, which uh, for everybody that went over to. Uh, Spotify, Apple, etc., to give us a far five star rating. Thank you. I know Carrie is one of those individuals, so thank you for doing that. Even if you listen here live on YouTube, please be sure to head over to Spotify or Apple or Amazon, wherever you podcast, or even if you don't podcast, head over there, give us a five star rating. It helps the show. JW has a great question. Wants to know about the the one legged pants. This is something that it's not. They're not really pants. Uh, what would you consider the? What would you call the uh, Angel Reese? one-legged style what is that Kashin? leggings i mean it's really just like um it's just a style, what right? them. yeah it's just a style it's not like anything you gain any benefit from it it's just a popular look i guess okay I just wanted yeah. to bring it up because I've had some people ask me is that due to an injury is that her trying you know, no it's just style okay all right um Let's, uh, again, we're trying to run the gauntlet of calls here. Let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call-in line. Who's on the line? Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Is it, I'm on. You, you're on. Yep. Hey, hey uh, first question I got for uh, Corey is uh, on the hat, did you lose a bet? No. <laughs> and, uh, Abs- absolutely not. I actually, you know what? You know, usually I wear this hat on Thursdays. Thursdays are my day, my days to wear the cowboy hat. But uh, I broke it out on a, on a Monday for for the sake of this yeah, one. Stick, stick to Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I got a question. Uh, one for uh, Corey and one for uh, Miss Alexander. <clears throat> you know, I've been watching you know as much of these interviews and this kind of stuff going on and. Obviously, Caitlin's a generational player, but this team seems to be incredibly close on a personal level. Like these people will be friends with each other for the rest of their lives. And so I'm just wondering, Corey, if you've got uh, insight, you know, to the coaching staff, how they put this whole system together. Because, you know, when I listen to these interviews with that uh, Jan Jensen, she's extremely impressive. Um along with Coach Bluter and stuff. But, you know, just you being close to the uh, the school as much as you can, I mean, what is the feeling, you know, how they how they build this system? Because this team seems very, very close-knit. And it 
seems to carry over into the way they play on the court. They're very fun to watch, obviously. Yeah, that's, so I that's just a, wanted to give insight to the coaches, just you know, with your show and all that stuff that you pick up. Uh, no, other than you know having a, some conversations with former players like Kashin, but Kashin, you obviously have played for Lisa Bluter, for Jan Jensen, for Jenny Fitzgerald, so you have a better idea of how chemistry and culture has been built in Iowa city. And obviously you look down the, the line here, 10, 12 years since you played, but I mean, still what, what do you envision? What do you know about how this thing has been built? Um, I mean, one of them, one of the things I don't think that a lot of coaches do is that Lisa Bluter makes it an emphasis to harp on assists in general. And, I know that sounds like really basic, but to the point where she even made us and then it obviously became part of who we are, but thank the passer. Like, and that's just a simple thing of like, you'll see, you still see it. It's so funny because as a former player, you still see it where they'll make a great pass. And then they'll like put their finger up, like pointing at the passer. That's a thing that Lisa Bluter teaches. And it just becomes so ingrained in you that now you are becoming closer, not just on the court, but off the court. All of the girls stay together. That's always been a thing, right? So they live together. They play basketball together. They go out together. They do all of these things together. And that kind of builds the camaraderie. But it starts on the basketball court with basketball things. And it's not just a everyone for themselves. It's never been that. She cares more so about the beautiful pass and gets more excited about the pass and the actual actual basket itself. And that rubs off on her players tremendously. Well, um, then my other question would be to Miss Alexander. um, And I guess I'm biased, but you know, when I was watching those seals, you know, we're sitting there watching comments. Like, that was the slowest player on the court making those steals. And I'm not being negative, but uh, I'll take our center. I mean, uh, she runs the court like a thoroughbred. And I just don't think she realizes how good she is. But when she does, I would. I thought she could have dominated tonight. I think maybe she was just a little intimidated. I don't know. She wasn't up to her regular game. But, man that girl can run and she can move and she's very athletic, very graceful. And I just, you know, wondered what you thought, uh, you know, at least what going forward, how dominant she can be. I'm assuming you said Hannah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think for both of our post plays, right. When you get into a game like this, a lot of the times you get nervous because you don't want to, take an ill-advised shot or, you know, make your post move. It comes with a lot of confidence to know that you're going to make that. And so a lot of the times when you get into these big games in Addison O'Grady or uh, Hannah Stokey, they're a little nervous to do that. Um, So I think, again, her main focus was trying to box out, trying to battle with these post players, and it kind of took her out of her game. But I just felt like she should have been running the breaks off of LSU. And she did once, um, but I still think even Addison O'Grady got one. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> but I think that she she has such a huge upside, man. Like by the time Hannah leaves Iowa, she's gonna be in a, a big time all timer. Like by the time she leaves Iowa, I have all the confidence in the world that we will remember her name, um, and most South guys will remember her name in that aspect. So I think she has a tremendous upside, and I think that. Um, this summer is going to be very key for her as far as where the next year is going to take her. I agree. And uh, by the way, Corey, I, this show is just so good. It's just incredibly good. And I just saw your other uh, deal come across. I will go over to Spotify and put some five stars on this one. Because, Corey, because I'd love to see this thing grow. Woo! Thank you for, anyway, for calling uh, in. Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Yeah, always, always happy to hear people uh, wanting to do everything they can to support the show. 
And one way you can, of course, support the show is supporting the people that have been supporting this. Even when we were talking Iowa and Arkansas Pine Bluff or whoever was on the schedule earlier in the year, people like RTI Threads, companies like RTI Threads have been with us through thick and thin. So please support them. They've got so many great Hawkeye athletes that they've uh, partnered with, apparel that they're sporting. RTIthreads.com, IowaBaseballSwarm.com. Support the baseball team as they head into the thick of their season. It's a brand new website. Check it out. It's live right now. IowaBaseballSwarm.com. I've got the Aaron Graves shirt on. More where this comes from, or more where this came from, I should say, over at Iowa Baseball Swarm and www.RTIthreads.com. The link to all of our sponsors can be found in the description of the show. And as always, Iowa Smokehouse and their authentic jerky. It's great quality. It's great tasting. Their summer sausage is delicious. Their meat sticks are awesome. Um, I actually had more of their barbecue sauce this evening. They've got so many great products and uh, just stuff for almost every meal, every snacking time. Check it all out, iowasmokehouse.com. That's www.iowasmokehouse.com. Use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your total order as you support Iowa Smokehouse. You support this show, Iowa wins basketball post game here from the Hawkeye of the storm. Again, use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your order and get free shipping with any $50 order at iowasmokehouse.com. The Yukon Huskies have defeated the USC Trojans 80 to 73, and it will be the Hawkeyes and the Huskies. Paige Beckers this evening, 28 points, 10 rebounds, and six Assists, this will be a rematch from a game two years ago in which UConn prevailed. I believe that game was out in Portland, I think. And um, so I think Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark are friends, I think, Kashin. I'm assuming so. Um, Mm -hmm. And so uh, there will be a lot of star power in that one. We're not going to get to see the Juju versus Caitlin game, but this will be. I mean, Paige Beckers uh, was really good. Look, you look at her stat line. She has been really good in the postseason, really good tonight. Congratulations to the Huskies and the Hawkeyes will try to get back to the national championship game um, by uh, winning on Friday night. So we'll end with a a quick preview of that game. I believe we've got our last caller on hold. I believe we have our last caller on hold. So before we get to our caller real quickly, Hawkeye Howard, thank you for the super chat. It's a good day when Corey breaks out the hat. Thank you, Hawkeye Howard. Please be safe. I saw you had a tornado warning down in your area. So please, uh, be safe. Uh, be sure you're uh, staying inside for the evening. Brandon, what's the guess on how many millions tuned into this game? I'm not good with the numbers, but uh, do you care to Did they it? release it yet? Because I can't wait to hear see it. Yeah, what's, what's the anticipation from you? Do you have a number? Like I'm, I'm four, thinking between eight and four, ten. ten. I'm oh, thinking eight to ten. That many? Wow. Okay. That's what I'm thinking, man. I feel like everybody was watching this game. Call me biased. I don't know. Eight to ten. That's what I'm going with. Um, Katie, where do you think Angel could get development? Where, what does she need the most? Cause she post moves and a jump shot. There you go. Real is simple. there anything you can do from a? Uh, I know this is, sounds weird, but we're talking about. You know, she's not as nimble as some athletic bigs are. Um. How do you address that? Is that through like just work in the gym? Is that through aerobics? Like, how do you address that kind of thing? Um, kind of agility, work? a little bit, right? But again, remember, there's a ceiling for everybody. So uh, agility. But the thing about the thing about Angel is she's okay because she's able to block shots well the only issue is when she runs into a shooter like caitlin caitlin ain't coming in there she don't have to (laughs) so you gotta come out and if you do come out that's when you have the issue so i think that on her for her she's gotten away with it for so long because she's a really good shot blocker and um offensively like i said it's her biggest downfall and it sounds crazy because she averages double doubles but she really just be deep blowing people like she, she's not doing no crazy nice post moves. She's not. We that's never it. It's never a ooh. We don't ever say that with Angel. It's more of a I'm gonna go through your chest to get a, to finish. She can't do that. <laughs> um, 
against Asia Wilson. Against those kind of players, she can't do it. So she's going to have to have a post move. And I think that's her biggest thing is a post move. And a jump shot would be nice. She ain't got to do it, but a jump shot would be nice. Jeremy says, how do you feel about Iowa next year and moving forward? Could they be a powerhouse? Obviously, they got a really good recruiting class coming in next year. They've got a couple of, well, one high four and then a five-star and Addy deal coming in the following season. Is it possible to make Iowa a powerhouse, especially this late in Lisa Bluter's career? I don't know. Honestly, I'm just trying to make it to the next game. I don't even want to think about next year. I just want to ride this wave as long as I can ride it. Okay. Like I'm just hoping that Caitlin plays every possible game she could in her last year. And then what we get from that, we get, uh, that's just how I feel about it. I think that women's basketball in itself will be good. I think that Lisa Bluter will have enough talent on the floor. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously next year is up for grabs. I have no idea what we're going to look like. I don't think Lisa do either. UConn uh, has the most Final Four appearances in the history of the game, 23 now with their appearance this year. 23 nice. Final Four appearances for the Huskies. Incredible. Um, with yeah. seven players, active players. That's crazy. They've got seven <laughs> active players? Seven. Yeah. Everybody hurt. I don't know how to. I don't know how. If 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 Gino, this might be the best coaching year of his life. Seven active players is crazy, and especially with all the talent that we've had this year across the board in women's basketball, and you still make it to the final four. That's wild. All right. Um, going to. Ban somebody in the chat. All right. Uh, Brandon wants to know about Gino's comment on Paige being better than Clark. I don't think he said that. I think he just called her the best player in the country. Like, that's that's a coach, right? That's your coach. You're not going to say that she's uh, the third best player in the country, right? It's she's fair. really good. She's one of the three or four best players in the country. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that. He has every right to say whatever he wants because she's carrying them right now. So he can say whatever he wants to say. That's fine. Um, Caitlin has her own inside motivations. Whatever those may be. Carter wants to know who's going to be, the, who should be the favorite. Iowa or UConn. Yeah. I, I think absolutely Iowa. Yeah. Big time. Uh, and I know this game, the Iowa LSU game was basically a toss up. Um, UConn beating USC. I, I'm just catching the end of it here. Of course, we're live on, on the air, but uh, no, I, I think Iowa will be favored. I would guess by maybe four would be my guess uh, heading into Friday's six. game. So you think six? Okay. Yep. Um, I think that I'm not saying I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what they're going to say. <laughs> yeah. And Scott wants to know, or would that mean Paige and Caitlin Clark going head to head? Are they are they guarding each other in that matchup? Nah, no way. Yeah, you're not putting your your only scorers. Well, okay. <laughs> let me be clear because we don't need anybody getting in getting ripping me a new one after I say this. So let me be very clear. Paige is their number one scorer. Caitlin Clark is our number one scorer. If you have them guard each other, they're going to tire each other out. So, no, they're not going to guard each other. My guess, if I had to guess, they're probably going to put Gabby on her, although I don't like the matchup, but that's what they're going to do. Because um, I would put Sydney on her, but that's just me. Um, yeah, that's who they're going to put on her. Caitlin's going to be guarding their least effective person. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but whoever that is, Caitlin's on her. Iowa's been getting teams in foul trouble. They got LSU in foul trouble. They got Colorado in foul trouble. If they can get UConn in foul trouble, that might determine the game, given the lack of depth for the Huskies. So that will be a storyline to follow heading into Friday's game. Yep. Uh, Katie wants to know about the prep. So what – I know you said you haven't watched a ton of UConn basketball this year, but knowing what you know, I mean, obviously Geno's teams were – they've been pretty – well, they've not pretty consistent. They've been unbelievably dominant 
over the years, the, the greatest dy dynasty in the history of the sport. Based on what you know about Geno's teams and how Paige Beckers plays, what will Iowa's focus be this week? Iowa's focus is going to be on Iowa. I know that for a fact. I, the, the, the thing about Lisa Bluter is she keeps it very simple. She'll have one thing, if that, to focus on. With LSU, it was rebounding. They didn't focus really on anything else. That was it. Keep them off the boards. That was their main focus. The same goes for everybody else. She tries to keep it very simple so that it doesn't overwhelm the girls. Um, so they're going to 95% focus on Iowa and focus how we need to run, score, et cetera. Um, as far as UConn is concerned, I need, like I said, I need to look a little bit more into UConn as far as what they uh, run. So I'll be ready for that on Hawkeye Hangout. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, let's see. All right. I think let's let's hit our last caller. Actually, we've got two more callers. We're going to try to be relatively quick here because Kashin's got to get to bed at some point. It's not a Saturday night, so some people have work in the morning. Let's go to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Who's on the line? Good evening. This is John. Hey, John. Uh, Brad Heinrich said today in an interview that Lisa was going hard after a five-star in the portal. Uh, with what we're losing and what we have coming back, is a big, the most important thing to add in the portal? Good question. Kashin? No. I think we need a point guard. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I think I think expecting a freshman and Ava Hyden to step up next year is questionable. That that's I'm not counting on that. However, yeah. you can you can survive at the five by committee. Right. Now, it's gonna be harder to survive by committee when you don't have Caitlin Clark. Um right. but I absolutely agree. They lose Molly and Caitlin John, so absolutely who's gonna run the point? <laughs> they gotta figure that out. That's gotta be priority number one. I know uh, Sydney Falter said it's, she made an, a, a commitment to Iowa. They asked her why she stayed when she could have left without not getting much playing time. Uh, she said her commitment to Iowa. Is there any con was big to her? Is there any concern somebody might try and poach her in the off season? Nope. What is by by by. Nature, I would usually doesn't have many people going the portal since the portal opened up, and there's a reason for it. People like playing in Iowa, they like playing for Lisa Bluter, and that's that. And so, I don't see Sydney going anywhere, especially next year being so wide open for her to do whatever the heck she wants to do. Is there, I guess, this is maybe a better question for recruiting experts, but. Is there enough money on the women's basketball side, NIL side right now, for the non-top tier players like Anissa Morrow, Haley Van Lith, the players that entered the portal last year, and I think the consensus is they probably got some money to go to LSU. I think that's probably fair to say, hypothesize. Is there that kind of market for someone like Sydney Falter if she did want to pursue NIL opportunities? What do you think about that, Cash? No, I don't think she has enough of a name for it. Like Angel Reese already had a name. Haley Van Lith already had a name. Anissa Mara already had a name because they were breaking records wherever they was at. And yeah. so I think that is the key to everything. I don't think many people know who Sydney F. Alter is outside of Iowa fans. Well, they're they're getting to know her a little bit in this. Well, term. now, correct. But I don't think it's to the point of, oh, we're going to throw money at you. No. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, John. Appreciate the phone call, sir. All right. Um, I'm just showing Kim Mulkey on Sports Center. Let me power this down. I don't need to see that. Um, so here, here's the deal. Um, I want to give everybody an update on Friday. The game Friday between the Hawkeyes and the Huskies will be at 8 p.m. Central time. Oh, my God. 
You need to calm down, Kashin. Okay. You you need to you call. What? At least it's a Friday night and I ain't gotta get up and go to work the next day. Cause wow. <laughs> well, somebody's gotta play that game, right? Um that's terrible. Yeah, and, and that's too bad for Yukon fans that are out on the East Coast. So yeah, I Iowa Yukon 8 p.m. and that game. Um, I don't know what channel that game will be on. Is that a do you know if that's ABC or ESPN? I, I don't know. So we're going to say um, to be announced for now because I don't have the to answer. Be announced. Yes, 8 it p.m. Central is... time. No, it doesn't right. say. Right. I don't know. Good question. We'll have to wait. Probably on. ABC or East... it probably ESPN or ABC, one of them. Um, before we go to our final caller of the day, which is Tom. Thank you to all 517 people who are still here, almost two and a half hours in. Um, for those 500 some people, have you liked the Facebook page yet? Please do that if you've not already done so. Have you hit the like button yet? The thumbs up button? Very simple. One action. What is our count? What is the like count right now, folks? On the Did we make a thousand? Say it again. Did we make a thousand? No, I bet not. Oh, 950. Can oh you... my gosh. Come on, guys. 50 likes. Like, come on. We just got, when I said like, we just got four more likes. So please scroll down, you 512 oh people. I, we just need 46 people to hit that <laughs> like button to break 1,000 likes. 46. 46. 46 likes. Come on. Get 1K. Get 1K. Get 1K. Hey, speaking of speaking of chants, how cool was it to see a uh, hear an uh, "Let's Go Hawks" chant in Albany, New York? Albany, New that? York. That's fantastic, man. I was fans of the. I don't care. I know everybody says their fan base is dope, but nah, y'all ain't touching us. Sorry, it's not happening. And they're going to swarm Cleveland. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cleveland ain't that well. I mean, well, it's a lot closer Cleveland than from Iowa well, City. It's uh, it's probably. I know Columbus is about uh ten hours. Ten hours for nobody cares about Ames. T. Hank, I say Iowa City. Don't even bring them up in this chat. Okay, well, I'm I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> By the way, we're at 986 on the likes. Go down and hit the like button, I'm folks. I'm so sorry. I'm just getting excited because we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hit it. The, the fans will get us there. We're at 986. Woo! Um, okay. Uh, final Iowa Smokehouse caller of the day. Thank you to Iowa Smokehouse for making all of this fan interaction possible. I think this is so cool to be able to get Iowa fans involved with such a great former Hawkeye great in Kashin Alexander. Let's go to Tom, who's on our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. Tom! Cash, good to see you. Corey, you too. Hey, um, I was worried about this game, of course. Cash got me all worked up over it ahead of time. <laughs> but, Corey, I did. I sent you a super chat the last show that said Iowa does have the Caitlin factor. They sure do. That girl... I like what I like watching is she can score 40 points, but it, when them, when, when we don't, when somebody doesn't guard her, she controls the game. She gets her assists. And, you know, that's what other games disrupt. If you go back to the men, the Nebraska game in the mm -hmm. Big Ten championship and they were down by eight points, that girl knew exactly how quick to get the ball down the floor, get it to Kate in for two points and eat away at that eight points and tie that game up. She, she is like a coach on the floor. And if she can keep playing that way in the next two games, it, it'll be great. And that's the way she played tonight. I even seen her play that way in the West Virginia game. It was a struggle game, but she was able to control that game. And as long as she can control it, that that's just it amazes me of watching her. It's not the 40 points, 
It's just mm -hmm. how she controls the game. She quarterbacks it. She's just, she's no Spencer, you know, but, but she's a good quarterback. <laughs> Nobody can be Spencer, Tom. Hey, I heard Spencer's really good in practice. Hey, uh, Utah you State. Heard anything, and, and I mean, on all series, have you heard anything about, is he competing in spring ball for Utah State? Do you know? Yeah, I heard him talking about how he's looking good in practice. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll see. How's the wife doing, you Tom? Might, you might good. She went to bed. I was uh I had you on the big screen and I had to I had to come out here, so I thought I'd tune in before you shut me down for the night. But we've had you on the big screen. She was nervous the whole night. Does she like Kashin as much as she likes me? Oh yeah. She got to see the fifty dollar super chats tonight. <laughs> I would have sent you one, but it might have made her a little jealous, you know. So, oh, we, we, yeah, send we don't need those problems. You got to send her one too. By the way, we are at 999 likes. So, somebody just go down and hit that stupid like. Oh button. my god, I'm stressing out you over know, here over one like. You know, I mean, my ex, you know, my hope for this season was that we could at least get back to the elite eight. You know, I mean. That if we would get beat, it, I would still be. It was a great season, so this is over and a top. I love it. I, you know, and everything. And I'm kind of like Kashin. I could give crap who we play now. From now out, it's just bonus time. So we got to win. I'll let you guys go. Thank you, Tom. Always a pleasure, sir. She's got to go to bed. More like. The, the problem is you have, I know these are people that are trying to just mess with us. They unlike to send it back down to 997 or 998. And for some reason, we're struggling to get these last. Well, this now we're at 999 again. So someone just needs to hit that hasn't done. It. Okay. We just hit 1000. <laughs> now we've done it. If it goes back below, it doesn't matter because we hit 1,000 and we hit 1K. 1K, 1K. Is that the most likes you've ever had? Probably. That's a, that's a good question. I wonder if I could find that in my uh, analytics. I'll have to look that up. Well, look at me breaking records. Look Let at me it. You know, I've never promoted liking the streams well, like you. What? It's a new day. And I can also <laughs> tell you, Coach Patterson does not show up in a Snuggie chanting one more like one more like get Although, one k get one k i will say this two uh it was it two years ago when iowa football won or uh, they won the west and got to the big 10 championship game that night coach patterson bless his soul great man great friend, friend of mine he hopped on for a live stream and he was on for probably two three hours but he, he stayed on until the channel which was very young at the time hit i think 1000 subs so we hit 1000 subscribers during the course of that live stream and so uh, he refused to go to bed until we hit 1000 subscribers so do appreciate that that effort from everybody um and m finn wants to see coach patterson in a snuggie so i'll i'll pass that on to coach patterson i don't think that's gonna happen but i'll do my best hey, um this snuggie is my good luck charm baby it's gonna be here every game all right well we, we got to get that. We got to get you that pink one. So, uh, <laughs> um, all right. So a couple of reminders before we log off. Thank you to everybody for being here. Obviously that's number one. A couple of things I didn't mention earlier. You can support the show in a few other ways. Sign up for a free trial of aura, protect your personal information, protect your uh, things like your social security number. There's so many scammers and spammers out there yeah. trying to corrupt your information. And so many, uh, so many companies out there, but aura is one of the, most well-known and most reliable companies in supporting and helping you protect your personal information. Sign up for a free trial, benefit this show and benefit yourself. www.aura.com slash Hawkeyes. Click the link in the description below. Also from the Hawkeye of the Storm Apparel and Merchandise, link in the description. Please support by uh, purchasing from the Hawkeye of the Storm gear. Also support the channel by sponsorship. If you want to reach out, from the Hawkeye, or excuse me, from the eye of the storm at outlook.com. Don't ask me why it's from the eye of the storm at outlook.com, not from the Hawkeye of the storm. Way too long of a story. You can also contact me, editor at storycounty.news, editor at storycounty.news for information on sponsorship. Please share the show on social media if you enjoy the content. 
it's likely that others will too. And speaking of social media, follow this show at From the Hawkeye on Twitter and on Instagram. I mentioned the Facebook page earlier. Please support the Facebook page. If you've not done so, head over to Instagram. It's another uh, discrepancy on my part, inadequacy. I have not done a good enough job promoting this, and I've covered both of our faces so that we can show the banner. Look at this, 547 followers on Instagram. That's ridiculous. I appreciate all 547 of you, but come on, let's get that number up. Again, please like and follow on all of the social media platforms. And of course, uh, thank you, Josh. I want—I don't want to forget Josh. Thank you, Josh, for the donation via Venmo. Um, if you want to support the show, you can see on the bottom ticker, we've got links to Venmo, P PayPal, Cash App. Um, thank you to everybody that uh, supports so that uh, I can keep doing this. We can keep plugging away. And, and regardless of what happens in the future, I want to be able to continue to do these Iowa postgame shows, regardless of, mm -hmm. okay, Caitlin Clark's not around, fine. But this is a, a, a step in, in, in the direction that I hope we can sustain. I think we will as a fan base. So. Appreciate it. Everybody. If you feel, appreciate like it. feel free to follow me on Twitter. It is my name, K A C H I N E, Alexis, A L E X I S. Yes, follow. Uh... Enjoy. <laughs> a lot of you have actually already followed me. So that's always a fun, you know, back and forth. You guys ask questions and do all those cool things. So it's fun to interact with you guys. Absolutely. At Kashin Alexis on Twitter. Um, give her a follow, especially for uh, in-game banter back at <laughs> yeah. to Twitter. In-game is fun. Uh, Lonnie, thank you for the super chat. You haven't the best, or you have. I think he meant you have. Yeah, that's what Lonnie meant. You have the best guests in the business. Yep. You mm -hmm. have the best guests in the business. Thank you, Lonnie. Um, I agree with that one whole sold 1000%. Uh, the, the, I mean, I mean that absolutely seriously. I, I, I brag about you, Kashin. I brag about coach Patterson, coach close. It's the trifecta here on the show. So um, obviously I look forward to, to continuing this Friday, um, hopefully recapping an Iowa victory and a unbelievable run to the national championship game. And, and hopefully we can, we can do this moving forward, but it's been a joy and um, Iowa and, uh, UConn Friday night, that game, 8 p.m. Central time. So we got kind of a late tip. It will be on an ESPN network. I'm not sure if that's ABC or ESPN yet. One of the two. I think it's ESPN. It's probably ESPN on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. Sunday will be ABC for the national championship game. So, uh, Kashin, thank you for being a trooper here. Uh, over the last couple hours and anything to, to add uh, we'll, we'll we'll if you're up for it we'll try to get a, a live show in here at some point based on your schedule this week as we kind of count down the days to uh, Iowa Yukon um an uh, opportunity they've already made history but an opportunity of making more history this weekend so it'll be yeah. fun to bring it. absolutely um no I'm just excited man this is a great time to be an Iowa Hawkeye fan um and enjoy the ride because even if we make it to the championship game, by the end of this week, we will be national champions and we will see Caitlin Clark play her last game. So either way it goes, enjoy this last week, guys. It's going to be awesome. I hate to do this late and, and, and kind of throw us all for a loop, but I see um, a Hawkeye fan named Kay that just tried to uh, is trying to get access here on StreamYard. Okay, then, then they, they left. They couldn't figure out how to connect their microphone. So, mm. Kay, if you had a question for Kashin, we'll try to be back here um, sometime this week leading up to Iowa and UConn on Friday night. Have a great night, folks. Get some rest, and we will talk to you on – well, we'll talk to you earlier in the week, but we'll definitely talk to you on Friday. Have a great night. Absolutely.